is money, honey. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. It's like bees to the honey. Honey, money, honey, money, honey. It's the sauce cast, baby. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to our lovely audience out here. Clap it up for these lovely ladies and McQueen that's in the house. <laughs> Go ahead, let's see some energy. Whoever's the least clapped gets kicked off. <laughs> Amazing. Welcome to uh, the Sauce Cast, only here on Valuetainment, the sexiest financial show in the world. This is where finance meets romance. I'm your host, Adam Sauce. You can call me Sauce, and we're here for one reason and one reason only. Isn't that right, Natalia Del Valle? Yes. What's that reason? We want to we see, want to see you, you guys get paid. paid laid and, and do it your way. way so you know what we do here we bring on absolute studs beasts savages whether they're shadow banned or not yeah. we got one today his name is mcqueen you're gonna meet him in a second mm -hmm. mcqueen give the ladies a little one of those things you're doing uh, hello hey, ladies. ladies hey ladies we also have a lovely panel of opinionated philosophical conservative <laughs> liberal out there women um Let's get into some of the topics we're going to be discussing today. Does any, is there anyone, before we get started, that's like, I don't want to discuss X, Y, or Z? Anyone? No. Speak Great. Now. Great. We usually do the, ask you that on camera uh, Just ahead of time. Just your feelings, sir. <laughs> so uh, we're going to get into some of McQueen's greatest pickup lines. I've scoured the internet. I've seen what you're doing out there, brother. <laughs> Respect. Okay. Appreciate Rolling you. Rolling up on ladies. Hey. Swagged out with the sauce, with the riz. Hey, for all the kids best. talking about these days. We'll kind of review some of those videos <clears throat> um, uh, and get into some of those specific details. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Tate. I saw that you were going up to ladies with the best yeah. Tate pickup lines. We'll see how that did. We'll get ladies' opinions on that. We'll have a conversation about the Tate brothers, the Paul brothers. Um, not sure if you saw some of the beef that's been going on the internet between Logan Paul and Jake Paul. Mm. Logan just got engaged about a month ago to a girl. Does anybody know her name? No. Nina Agdal, uh, who's actually a girl from Miami that I used to kick it with. And oh. not one, not two, but three of my homeboys dated oh. before she... <laughs> um, so that means yeah. they fucked her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Just got to put that out there. So, but I actually like Nina, so this is no disrespect, but, you know. No yeah. disrespect, Nina. Uh, we will, we will, we, we have uh, the images to back up my, uh, my case right there. So, that we'll talk is. about that. And we'll talk about um, whether she is a social climber or not, <gasps> based on her dating record. So, we'll get into that. Uh, we'll talk about should ladies take advice from famous porn stars oh. um, uh, when it comes to dating. Uh, and this in particular is Lana Rhodes. Uh, anyone he hear about Britney Spears getting divorced recently? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about what Kevin Samuels has to say about mm -hmm. women's sexual market value and when to pack it in and when you go on clearance. So, uh, and we'll talk about the latest victim of cancel culture. This is Queen's song called Fat Bottom Girls. You familiar with this song? Fat bottom girls, they make the rockin' world go wild. Nobody? No, Queen? No, Never no. heard of a fat bottom girl. Oh, wait. Yeah. That's an old song. It's an old song. Yeah, it's Queen, baby. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Sarah on the ball right here. And yeah. then obviously sprinkled in throughout this episode, we'll talk a little bit, a bit about money, relationships. This is where finance meets romance. So we'll have that discussion. Before we get in uh, to meeting our guests and meeting our panel, speaking of money, let me give a quick shout out. To our sponsor today, anybody here like uh, gold? Me. You like gold? Yeah, very much. You know, they say that diamonds are our girl's best friends, but, gold. you know, anyone wearing gold here? I Me. see some yes. gold right there. Okay. I see some gold. Bling, bling. Every time I come across your city, bling, bling. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk a little bit about gold. We'll talk about why we're believers in this company called American Hartford Gold. So we all know that my catchphrase that I tell everybody all the time is save that money. Why do you save that money? So you can invest and diversify your assets and accumulate assets and hedge against risk and that's exactly what gold does for your portfolio so if you're diversifying so i'm very open about my assets portfolio i became a millionaire because my 401k and my uh, index funds and my reits and all my different investment strategies including crypto and bitcoin but most of all saving that money and part of that actually is having commodities like silver and gold so uh, american heart for gold will actually ship Physical gold and silver directly to your door. Boom, straight up, in your face, gold. How you like me now? I like that. Boom. Or they can set you up with a gold IRA. There it is right there. So uh, they've earned a five-star rating from thousands of reviews, but even more importantly, they've earned an A-plus 
from the BBB. Not what's the BBB? The BBB. Whatever you say it is. It's a better business bureau. You better <laughs> listen up next time before you get canceled. Uh, but anyway, to all the listeners out there, to anyone considering having gold in your portfolio, to hedge against inflation, to hedge against money printing, um, we got the VT deal going once, going twice, sold. VT deal, you get up to $5,000 of free silver on your first order. So if you click the link in the description, we have that, my friend Malik, in the description down there. You can do it old school style. You can call 866-443-6361, old school style. Pick up the phone, 866-443-6361. Or you could simply text SOS, S-O-S. Oh. Uh, how do you spell SOS? S-O-S. Yeah, you don't know about the BBB, but you best know about SOS. All right. S-O-S. So that's 65532. You can text 65532 uh, and text SOS. Uh, and they will ship $5,000 of free silver uh, on your first order. Shout out to American Hartford Gold in the house. Go get you some gold out there. Anyway, with that being said, let's meet our amazing, beautiful, sexy, studly panel. You know how they say that ladies come first, ladies first, ladies first. Not on this show, ladies. We got a gentleman in the house today. And even though he goes by McQueen, he's a king in my book. Hey, I appreciate McQueen, that, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, YouTuber, you just crossed a million yes, subs. Comedian, you just moved from L.A. to Miami five months ago, you said. You got a podcast called, what, extra Out? Yes, sir. You're still doing that. Fitness trainer. Above all that, you got abs and you just approach girl with the riz. I mean, you got, like, the perfect package, trifecta. I just felt like I met the black version of meat. Respect. Hey, I do, the, I do my best. Thank you, man. You're doing your thing. So <laughs> yeah. what's your deal? What'd you, what, why'd you come to Miami? Give us your little background. Um... Well, I was tired of working for the whites, so... Um, um, the worst. The worst. Yeah, you know, so, like, uh, I just, you know, started my YouTube shit, and luckily, the, by the grace of God, it took off, and then uh, I spent seven years doing that, and um, and then, like, right around the seven-year mark, um, I had became friends with Fresh and Fit, like, I think a year and a half ago, and uh, they had been telling me to move over here. Nice. But I could never see myself living, uh, leaving Cali because that's just all I know. Are you in L.A.? Yeah. You know, and so, uh, <clears throat> but after the pandemic, it was never the same. And I feel like, you know, they always say that when you're the smartest in the room, you need to go to another room. Yep. So I felt like I was the smartest in the room for a while. And so, and I clearly the hardest working. So I was just like, okay, you know, I feel like I've already done the most and got the most out of what I could out of, out of here, especially after the pandemic. Everyone was just afraid to go outside yep. and talk to you. And, you know, as you see from my YouTube videos, I go and I approach bitches in public, you yep. know. So um, people were just, like, afraid and wearing masks. And even after, like, the mask mandate being taken away, people were still just weird. So I was, like, really hard to get what I needed to do done. So What was the final straw? We were like, fuck it, I'm out. Um, when I had worked my... And, because I know how much work I put in. So, like, when I spent, I think, 20, the whole 20 year, year of 2022 in L.A., putting in so much work, and then at the end of the year still feeling like I, like I didn't really get anywhere, that's when I knew I needed to move because it was just like, I know how much I work, mm-hmm. but why is it I still feel like I haven't really got where I need to get because of the work I put in? Mm-hmm. So, um, and like I said, I was just tired of, like, looking around and being like, damn, these niggas are retarded, you know? So, um, I, like I said, I knew that I had friends out here that were, you know, wanted more for themselves and wanted to reach the best version of themselves so I could resonate with that. And I was like, okay, they had already been telling me to move out here. So when I came out here in, Ju- in Ju- uh, was January for their 1 million subscriber party, oh nice. Um, I had networked and met a lot of people with, that were so like-minded in a matter of three days. And I haven't done that in L.A. for like over two years. Wow. So I was like, okay, well, this is clearly the place to be if I want to, like, you know, take it to the next level. So... I just packed up and left literally like a few weeks later and then I came over here. So. For someone like you, McQueen, that is out there, you're, you're in real life and also on camera meeting a lot of women, a lot of people, just networking, doing your thing. What do you think is the biggest difference between girls in L.A. versus girls in Miami? Mm. They're not too far off. Um, the difference in L.A. is that girls are, how do I say, they're just, they, they care more about money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, girls out here, they care about money, but they more care about like just being involved and being in, like having clout yep. and things like that. Um, and they're more willing to work with you. I noticed. Um, at least I don't know if it's because I, I mean I am who I am. I can't really tell. But I mean, I, I, me being who I am in LA didn't really seem like it fucking mattered. So um, 
And then I've noticed there's a lot more BBLs out here. Um, yep. There's a lot we'll more, talk about that today. Yeah, the way, there's ladies. a lot more BBLs and a lot more titties, uh, which I actually don't mind, but... You know, um, it's it's a, it's a lot harder to focus out here. You know, you got to really just like, for me at least, because, you know, I like ass and titties. I got to like completely just <laughs> stay away and just like keep my vision off of it for me to stay Kryptonite locked in. Kryptonite to a man out it there. It is. It is. You know, so. Um, yeah. I'll, give you, I'll give you what I've really, because I, I used to spend summers in L.A. Yeah. Um, going out there for like a month and then born and raised in Miami, been here my whole life. What I've realized, <clears throat> that it was in teen, going out, partying, networking, girls in L.A. versus Miami. Clearly, L.A., Hollywood's out there. A lot of companies, obviously tech companies, social media, everything's out there. So I feel like every girl, as you know, has a hidden agenda. I don't know. Are they talking to me because they need a job? They yeah. want to get a, a gig? They want to land a Hollywood career? They want to get in a commercial? They're trying to get into porn? Yeah. Who knows what they got going on, all right? right? So there's always, like, that social climbing aspect to women out there. It's like, do they like me for me or not, yeah, right? Yeah. In Miami... Let me tell you one thing. As long as you understand this, you'll understand. All these girls, brrr, all they want to do is party for free. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. Whether it's on a yacht, whether it's on a club, whether it's on a boat, whether it's at a house party, as long as they're eating, drinking, and partying for free, they're good. They're not necessarily trying to get into a movie. Yeah. Maybe they're trying to get into a porno. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there's a difference in my interpretation. Yeah. No, they're just more willing to have fun out here, I guess, yeah. you know, to put it simply. Because we don't have that industry. Yeah. So, anyway, respect to you, bro. By the way, what's your relationship status now? I'm single. Okay. Yeah. By choice. By choice. Okay. Yes. Stay single. <clears throat> huh? Stay single, my friend. I will. I'll okay. do it for as long as I can. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know they're throwing throwing stuff your way. Anyway, uh, respect to you. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you, you have not subscribed to McQueen's channel, you just hit a million on YouTube. Respect to you. Everything Thank will be in the man. description below. It's called the Mega McQueen. Uh, yes. Well, that's like the you know little loser tag name, but it's just McQueen. McQueen. Yeah. It's just McQueen. Yeah. Um. Anyway, now let's meet some of the lovely ladies that we have on the panel. We all know Natalia. We'll come to her last. But Marissa's in the house. Yes. Marissa, what's your story? Usually I'm going to ask you ladies two questions. What do you do for work, for money, and what's your relationship status? So, Marissa, lead us off. So, for work, I am a licensed esthetician. I have my own suite, so I work for myself. I am self-employed. Um, and then relationship status is single. Single? Yes. How long have you been single? Um, I, um, I would say like six months. Okay. Yeah. So married, uh, no, divorced, no, never kids, married, this, never that? divorced. I do have a kid. Okay. Yes. Damn. Um, she what was, was that, McQueen? No, yeah. no, I was just like, that's crazy. Is you have a kid? Yeah, she was very much born out. That's of what love. these ladies do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Kind of, they're pretty oh, much. As and far only as girls I know, I've done can my homework. Birth, just pretty much the only, only gender that can have kids. Go. Yeah. <laughs> just by popular belief. I don't yeah. know. Marissa, what's the last thing you said? Um, I said only women can give birth. Okay. So we're on the same page <laughs> yes. here. You just got canceled. Sorry about that, Marissa. <laughs> it's all right. Okay. Join the club. Okay. So esthetician, <laughs> single, and one kid. Yes. One kid. Okay. Cool. Nice for you. So we got K in the house. K by design. Right here. I asked her to pick up, move seats. She said, I'm not moving seats. I don't care what you say. <laughs> What's your story? What do you do for work? What's your relationship status? Uh, primarily a luxury real estate broker. I've been doing that for the last 10 years. I'm licensed in multiple states, back home in Salt Lake City, Utah, and then out here in Miami, Florida as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have an online coaching business. I help young women kind of reach their true potential as far as starting their own business building a life by design, K by design. That's where that comes mm -hmm. from. And then I've also been a professional model for the last three years on multiple covers of magazines, including Playboy. And that's how I've expanded my real estate business out here to the city. Nice. What other covers? Uh, adult star magazine. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, wow. So a different type of model, K. Well, no disrespect. But, no, I mean, it's, it's, like it's definitely a playmate style. Okay. I've never right. done full spread. Um, but I, I, like I said, I did the playboy. Would you? Uh, no. Okay. Why not? Because I have a real estate career. Okay. But for the right price, anyone can be bought. Uh, for ten million dollars, I'll go fucking full spread on cover of Playboy. Yeah, but because of how saturated the market what? is right now, that's, that's disrespectful. Not, that's Why? Never happen, but McQueen, yeah. you know you do the same hey, thing. I might full spread for ten. We million. might just do it yeah. back to back. Yeah, I might just right. Me and you, dog. Yeah. There it is. All right. So cool. Respect to you. How long have you been in Miami? Uh, going on three years now. Nice. From where? Salt Lake City, Utah. Utah. Oh. Some Mormon girls. Yeah. You know what they got in Utah? What? More man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, bum. Hey, what's your relationship status? I'm very single. Very single. Yes. That's that's way more than just single. Yeah. Why very? Um, well, I 
Miami dating Are you practicing life is, abstinence? Right now, currently, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, well, congratulations. We'll see what we can do at the end of the show to help you out. Um, Not going to happen. Respect. Okay. Um, Annie's an Aniko. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is, do you go by Annie or Aniko? Um, either. It depends okay, on you tell me. I'm the, you're the yeah. boss around here. Just like Ani usually. Okay, Ani. Like, yeah. Hi. Okay, Ani, what's your story? Where yeah. are you from? What do you do for work? What's your relationship status? So, originally, my dad's side's from New York City, my mom's from Connecticut, and my family has been in the reality TV industry since I was 12 years old. Oh, wow. We have been on the 90 Day Fiance franchise, and my family ended up getting a spinoff called Darcy and Stacey on TLC, so I've been doing that for a while. Nice. And through that, I went to school at the University of Arizona for a year and decided to come here after a year, and I landed a dream marketing internship with Ocean Drive Magazine. And after that, I just recently got onboarded to a marketing influencer agency. Oh, Congrats. So, Which yes. agency? Like it's called it? Bond Entertainment. Um, it got just launched by one of the ex-producers for my show. So we're nice. just like kind of getting everything on board. We're onboarding a lot of people that were on the TLC shows, like 90 Day Fiance. So What did you do on 90 Day Fiance, by the way? Um, honestly, just being myself, my mom went through so many of like relationships and everything, and that is what impacted me with my relationships. Was she looking to get a green card, or was the guy looking the to get guys, a green card? The guys. The yeah. guys. I have a lot of stories about that By the way, I, 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 I watch <laughs> zero reality TV yeah. show, shows <laughs> yeah. since my little stint on Keep It Up in the Kardashians, but <laughs> yeah. I will say that 90 Day Fiance... It's good stuff out there. My mom was on it for four yeah. seasons. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm anyway, supposed to be on it for you know one. Mom? No, my, parents, my mom watches it. Okay, yeah. well, cool. And what's your relationship status? I on currently it? just got into a very serious relationship about a few weeks ago. Congratulations. Thank you. How long were you dating before the few weeks ago? Um, we were just like casually talking, and then um, he visited me in Miami. He flew down from Boston. 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 That's where the accent comes in. Okay. <laughs> and we were just on the phone one day. I came home really late and we were just talking and he was just like, I was going to ask you out when you came back home and it's going to be all romantic. I was like, just ask me now. Like, oh, just get it out of the way. <laughs> just buddy. get it out of the way. I well, like congrats. You, you so like you're me. taken. Oh. Yes. Respect to you and respect Thank to your you. boyfriend and, and you. you know, wish you a lifetime of happiness and love and uh, get the prenup done. <laughs> um, so we got Ani right here, but then we got Anna to your yes. left. Hi. Anna. Yes. Anna Lev. Levchenko is my friend. Levchenko. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm what's from that from? Russia. Russian. From Russia. Mother Russia. Yes, <laughs> buyer beware, my friend. So, <laughs> you're a lovely girl. What's your story? I uh, moved here seven years ago. And, yeah, like, lived in Miami. M moved to LA for actually for like three months. Didn't like it. Come back here. You like uh, in and out, though. Yeah, that's why I'm coming back every other month. Yeah, <laughs> Just because that. of that. Just the in and out burgers. Yeah. Yes. Like, okay. no, seriously, like, it's my favorite. But anyways, um, I'm partly working like a lush esthetician and now, like, focusing on my fitness journey, like, on myself, like, to, like, get brands right now, like, um, sports clothes and stuff, so. You're a fitness was, influencer? I'm trying to be, Let's uh, see the muscles. Okay. okay. All right. Don't mess with her, bro. McQueen, you think you could take her in a fight? I, that, I'm not going to lie. Wow. I would probably beat her ass. <laughs> <laughs> Try. Try. What do you think about it, Anna? You think you could take McQueen in a fight? Yeah, let's do it. Hey. Listen, you I do not know, want know, any part of that. We're not going to go there. I did, like, uh, kickboxing with Muay Thai, so we're good. I'll be like this the whole time. All right, so maybe we do an after hours yeah, uh, Monday. Get a little yeah, in and out there. Winner, shit, gets the yeah. <laughs> Winner gets the curly fries. <laughs> Respect to you. What's your relationship status, Anna? Um, partly single. <laughs> partly single. So you're just cheating on your boyfriend. What's going on? No, 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 no. It's not like... Um, I have like a girlfriend mostly, like, you know, but we have like open a relationships girlfriend. so that I'm bi, so wow. we kind of like can like look for another people, talk to, to another people, but yeah, I have like a girlfriend, so. Wow. Wow. Do you, so do you guys yourself? fight each other? Huh? Do you guys fight each other? No. Why, why not? I protect her. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. So you're the main. Oh, Jesus. In the you protect her. I feel like I could be wrong here. Fact check me. I feel like the most instances of domestic violence are lesbian couples. They are. No, yes. no, 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 no. Yeah. They literally are. Yeah, I'm not saying your relationship, but those <laughs> Britney Griner types, they, small percent. they're scissor kicking and doing the whole the scissor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're punching <laughs> each other out. Yeah. But anyway, I wish you a lifetime of happiness, just like our friend Ani right there. <laughs> no, uh, bang, bang. <laughs> okay. I like that. Uh, and last but not least, we have the couch over here, the couch crew. Couch uh, Sarah's couch. back, Sarah Elizabeth. Hi. She's getting more conservative and buttoned up each time we see her she just came back from europe she's red pilled out she's going to church these days everything's going great in her life sarah what's new 
Uh, nothing. I literally I just got back last on Tuesday. I was gone for six weeks. Uh, I went on an adventure. Awesome. Yeah. What was the highlight? The highlight? Um, I think my favorite place I went was Cannes, France. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It was okay. Lovely. Yeah. Film festival? No, the film festival wasn't going on. Well, I'm just, that's where the film festival oh, is. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, that is where the film festival okay. is. Okay. Yeah. How many random nice Frenchmen were approaching you like, hello, come on the back of you know my uh, moped. Really come nice for a ride. <laughs> Frenchman. But he lives in Dubai. Oh. The old Habibi. Frenchman who lives in Dubai yeah. story. Habibi it was nice knowing Habibi. you, Sarah. Good luck <laughs> out there. Go to yeah, I'll say Dubai. this. Uh, Greg Giraldi used to say this all the time that, you know, you go to a European vacation and girls always have the best time. Girls that go by themselves, it's always some like some Italian guy like, hello, come on the back of the moped, beep beep, I'll show you around, give me a tour. No, no, like no dudes getting that tour. Like no guy, Giuseppe, thank you for the ride, buddy. Like doesn't happen for guys. So I'm sure for women, you're getting the tours of Cannes and uh, everywhere you want to go. Uh, not everywhere I wanted to go, but I do have, I have a Most good, places. I yeah. had a good time. Uh, um, gentlemen, if your woman's just traveling, backpacking around Europe, She's on the back of a moped. I'm just single. That. I'm just, that's a word to the wise out there. If Not I was you. in a really, I will say, I will say though, like, there was like certain places that would be really great to go with like, I want to go back with a significant other. Okay. And you're yeah. single now. Yeah. But potentially a nice French guy who lives in Dubai on the roster. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. That's a definitely. Um, speaking of traveling and meeting interesting people, I just got back from Aspen two weeks ago. Nice on a private know. jet, what's up, player? Okay. <laughs> uh, but we got Aspen in the house. I imported some Rocky Mountain High out here. Hello. Aspen's in the house. Sarah Aspen. brought you, right? Yeah. Aspen, my... I know nothing about you. This is your first time on the show. Sarah didn't even give us a heads up. She just said Aspen will be here. Aspen Nicole in a blue dress. Look out for my girl. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Wonderful to have you on the show. What's your story? Um, I'm a bartender, server. I work front desk at a gym, working on my CPT. I would love to be an esthetician. I'm just, I'm out here doing it all. Nice. You guys should maybe collaborate. So yeah, Aspen absolutely. from where? Iowa. Aspen from Iowa. From the Midwest. Okay. And what's your relationship status, Aspen? I'm um, single, but I'm looking for a husband. Looking for a <laughs> husband. Yeah. How old are you? Wow. I'm 23. 23, and you're already ready to get married. Well, I mean, yeah. Sarah is a very good influence <laughs> on you. Sarah, how young are you? I just turned 26. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, we'll have a conversation about age, dating, and all that, sexual market value. So best of luck if you guys are interested in um, some snow caps out there, skiing the Rocky Mountains. Uh, Aspen is single looking for a husband. Yes. Snow caps are what you do when you go skiing. Uh, it's my favorite candy, but okay. that works too. <laughs> you know, Nat, you're thinking about the food and the candy. And the Jamaican party okay. will come to you. Anyway, last but not least, we got um, Rose in the house. Rose Madrano. This is your first time on the show. First time. Rose, you know, looking all pretty and blue over there. Thank you for waiting your turn. Yes, of course. Give us your story. What do you do for work and um, what's your relationship status? I am a software engineer at a medical software company and I am single. I'm actually recently divorced. Okay. I've been single for four months now, actually. Nice. How long are you married for? Five years. Eat your heart out, buddy. She's on the sauce cast now. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Congrats. Any kids? Thank you. Yes, I have two boys. Two boys. Anyone Mom's else through. have kids on the panel? Woo Say hi to your kids if they're watching, ladies. Oh, my son is on YouTube. He's like, Mom. We love the yeah, kids out here. We love the kids. I'm yeah. just not raising anybody's kids. That's just my, that's where I stand on this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Huh? I hope not. Okay, all right. Anyway, last but not least... Uh, we got Natty, the baddie, with the Jamaican patty, who may or may not have a fatty. Uh, <laughs> she's out here. Natalia Del Valle, the co-hostess with the Moses. What's up? Yeah, I tell you guys all the time, listen, a man will do anything for a woman. A woman will not do anything for a man. When I met this girl, she was homeless, shoeless, couldn't read, had no vocabulary. <laughs> she was stuck in a garbage can. I said, get your little pretty ass up. You're coming on South Couch. You're the new co-host. <laughs> Girls will not do that for a man. Uh, they will not find McQueen in a garbage can one day and be like, hey, you're a good-looking guy. Let me clean you up, put you in the shower. They're not going to do it for yeah, you. They wouldn't even give you <laughs> but that's what us fellas will do for you. Thanks, yeah. Adam. Okay, we got no requirements. We love unconditionally. You all have conditions for us to get in your life. I put some conditioner in your hair. I said, clean it up. Boom, you're a, you're a star now. 
And look at you now. You got something on your jacket. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's your lint. <laughs> awesome. What's well, up, Nat? Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Happy SauceCast Day, everybody. We're super excited. Today, we have a full panel, a very interesting panel. We have a lot of good topics we'll be covering. Make sure you guys stop right now. Hit that subscribe button. Like the video. Share the video. All that fun stuff. Make sure, make sure you subscribe to McQueen's channel as well. That's also in the, the description. I'm super excited. Let's get this party started. And I'll be reading all of your super chats. We actually have one already if you want to okay, you, you, bang it out. From we're not going to bang cheese. anything out right okay. now. We're going to have a little respect. You know, I'm going to put a condom <laughs> on before I bang out these super chats because like I'm that know. kind of guy. Okay, I love all that. All right, protect yourself, kids. You don't know what's out there. Uh, speaking of uh, having some protection, just to be clear, Malik's here with me. Malik. The ebony to my ivory. Uh, the the uh, there he is. the black keys on the piano to my ivory <laughs> keys twinkling the ones and twos out there Malik how you feeling you ready to rock and have some fun oh yeah I'm great I got your back too I that's my guy oh. so I just want to be clear here before we get started I need Malik and especially McQueen to have my back hey because sometimes these girls get lippy I got you you're right sometimes they're beautiful and they're smart and they're engineers and all that but you know <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they won't move their seats. You gotta let them know. No, Ladies, I got, got you, this. And McQueen, <laughs> you, I know that you got, I know you're that dude. Hey, I know. I'm, I'm here for you, man. I got you. Thank you. Yes. The we brotherhood. We got this, ladies. Yeah. We got this. Hey, hey. <laughs> Matt, what I told you about taking it out of turn. Anyway, I'm right there with, you. with that Don't being worry. said, thank you guys for being here at the Southcast. Great to have you, everybody here, especially McQueen. Thank if you. If this is your first time being here, welcome. Hit sub, like the video, and for all the Southcast and Valuetainment fans, you know what we do. Last announcement. Next week oh, yes. we have our annual event called the vault um just a couple unknown characters will be speaking there like tom brady mike tyson pbd the biz doc yep. myself i'll be doing interviews in the back we're having a great time i think that we have a handful of tickets left yes all the executive tickets vip ceos have all sold out so we can some ga still available the vault mm -hmm. it's going down what august 31st September 1st, 2nd, 3rd, that whole yes. next weekend before Labor Day. There Boom, there you go. The Vault Conference. Uh, if you want to learn, be a part of a great network. There'll be about 3,000 people in attendance here at the Diplomat in uh, North Miami, uh, Hollywood area. And, um, you know, if you don't buy a ticket, I might just send Mike Tyson to your house and knock your ass out. Me too. Yeah. You never know. And that might show up. Thank you, guys. With that being said, <laughs> without further ado, let's start the show so my guy my guy McQueen's out here what's up man he's doing his thing he's got all sorts of viral videos he's got swag he's got riz he's got that sauce welcome to the sauce cast uh and I love some of the videos you do approaching women and some of the videos that you do like women have epiphanies like in real life like oh dude, what just happened to me I just got fucking McQueen bang yeah, yeah. so <laughs> there's this one video that we're gonna show and you went up to girl and you said, hey, a uh, question for you. Are all women prostitutes? Yeah. Okay, you know this one. And uh, you, you might be taken aback, like, what? How, how could he say something like that? Yeah. And then by the end of the video, she was like, oh, shit, I guess I am a, yeah. I guess I am a prostitute. I never even thought about this. Yeah. So I'm not saying this. These are your words. I'm just simply stating my case, your case. And we'll let our lovely ladies a panel on the panel Give their assessment. Oh, this is is that be great? Cool? Yes. Okay, All right, yeah, let's have some fun with this. Yeah. I'm not so, a prostitute. You are, though. <laughs> you are, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm so, uh, Malik, I believe you have this video of McQueen approaching uh, these women. No. Why? I'm not a prostitute. No, but hear me out, though. Where you're from. Let's say I get your number right now, right? And then I take you on a nice, lavish date, right? That costs money, right? Okay, we're gonna go half and half. No, I'm not gonna make you pay for No, money. hear me out. Listen to me out. If I don't pay, it's unattractive. Let's be real. Um, yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you. With that being said, if I spent money to go put it inside my gas tank to come pick you up, spent money to go on the, on the date, spent money to get you back to where, you know, say either your house or my house, wherever, and then eventually we buzz down, that means I had to pay for you, right? Oh, shit. <laughs> so therefore, y'all are. I could drop dead right now. I literally only have. Don't do that, baby. I need you. Let I me get your you. number because I do think you're very beautiful. <laughs> What's your name? Selani. Are all women? Pro okay. No. So, at the beginning, she's like, hell no. By the end, she's like, I guess I am. <laughs> just got McQueen. You just got McQueen. <laughs> bang bang. <laughs> so, McQueen, what made you come up with that premise? Um, you know what's funny? Uh, I actually don't know. I was just like sleeping. And I with just, a prostitute? No. no, no, not with a prostitute. I was sleeping, and then I woke up. I feel like it was a message from God for me to go spread the message that these women are prostitutes. But I was like, I woke up, 
And, like, you know, I don't know if you've ever, like, gotten a, a brand new idea that you just felt was given to you. But, like, I woke up it, at 3 a.m. out of my sleep and was like, oh, shit. And I rose up like The Undertaker. And I was like, damn, that's a good-ass idea. I should <laughs> like write that The down. Undertaker. No, like, I really yeah. did do that. And then I was like, okay, let me write that down. I'd never wake up at 3 a.m. like off of a YouTube video Spooky idea. So hour. I was like, okay, this is something I really need to do. So I did that. And uh, that's how I came up with it. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, it just makes sense. You know, they're always trying to come up with shit about men nowadays. So I was like, you know what? You guys are prostitutes. And, you know, I, don't, I still haven't found someone who can refute my, my argument logically. So. Well, let's see what the ladies have to say. Well, here's the, one of the things I say is that either way, you're paying for it. Okay? Yeah. So whether you're literally paying for a prostitute, you can go down to any club in Miami, you go to 11, you go to Dean's Gold, go to any stripper situation you got going on, you're going to pay for some action. Yeah. Or you take a girl on a date, you pick her up, put her in an Uber, you plan a date, you know, you go to Prime 112, you go to Joe Stone Crab, you go to a nice restaurant, that's going to cost you a couple hundred bucks. Then, you know, you're going to have a nice bottle of wine, have some cocktails. All right, cool. Then maybe we go to a club afterwards. Maybe we go out. All right, so cool. We're going out. Maybe you're buying a bottle, whatever, whatever. So either way, you might be spending 500 or 1,000 bucks. Now, which, which the, Adam also means yes. that they're prostitutes. There you go. Now, the only difference is uh, the actual prostitute, you are guaranteed um, some action by the yeah, end of the, the night. that's the shitty part. There is no guarantee when you take a nice young lady out. So you have to be very mindful with who you're taking out and who you're spending your money on. So, ladies, McQueen just came and called y'all prostitutes. I didn't say that. I think you're all lovely, working, classy ladies. I think you're so, all lovely prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies, how much truth is to, uh, is to there what Mr. McQueen is insinuating? Let's start with the most conservative of them all, Sarah. <laughs> most conservative. I mean, like, if you want to get that technical and logical, I mean, I guess, but like, listen, I, there's nothing wrong well, with like, it. Then I guess, like, at the end of the day, like, if you're dating someone, it's your consistent girlfriend, like, you're paying, like, at that are point, you she's call a your retired girlfriend prostitute? A prostitute. Like, I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of like a far out there point. I she's mean, your it's own not, personal prostitute. It's not just right. logically wrong, but I appreciate she's her honesty. So she's we a have, person we have one agreement yeah. with McQueen. Okay. Right. Marissa, how are you? You ever go on dates with men? Yeah. Who pays? Uh, the man. The man pays. Why yeah. does the man pay? Because that's how I was raised. Okay, nice. And when uh, it's time to go out, do you pick him up or does he pick you up? Uh, typically, he would pick me up. Oh, okay, nice. And uh, when you guys go out to a club, a bar, and you guys get a, you know, after dinner, and you got a couple round of drinks, who buys the drinks? Um, usually the guy. Usually the guy. This yeah. is This is wild. <laughs> Now, when it's time uh, at the end of the night uh, to, as my friend poetically said, uh, bust down, yeah. um, do you charge him any money to bust down? Or is that... Um, I personally don't, I mean, as you say, bust down too easily. Okay, so, gotcha. Yeah, so... So the man paid uh, mm -hmm. for everything. He picked you up. He bought you dinner, bought you drinks, took you out around, and he got how much action? Depends. Probably if it's the first time, absolutely not. So zero action. So maybe that man, if he really wanted to bust down, should have gotten a prostitute. I'm yeah. just saying. <laughs> okay. They're, they're but you're a classy girl and you don't play that game. No. So what what do you think about what he when he calls all women prostitutes? What do you have to say? Um, I feel like that's his opinion and if that's what he thinks is fine, I'm not afraid I'm not the type of person to be afraid of words. Um, I'm not so if you think all women are prostitutes, okay. Yeah, yeah, but no, listen to me. It's okay. no hate towards you know women. I'm just pointing out, like right. she said, it's it, it's a logical point. So, like, let me ask you this, right? If he doesn't have sex with you on the first date, right? Okay. And then let's say he has sex with you on the second date, he had to pay on that second date too, right? Correct. Oh yeah. So yeah. when he there's no like, refund for that first date. So if that's you don't what get I'm saying. So I wish if, there he, was. if he eventually has sex with you, whether it's the first, second, or third date, he had to pay all those times. Right. To get to the point where he has sex with you, right? Right. So that means he had to pay for pussy, right? Uh, essentially. So, I mean, are you not a prostitute? Me? Yeah. Personally? Hey, I'm, you know what I'm, I'm just trying nope. to... <laughs> okay. She just agreed right now. All right, let's go, down, let's go down the list here. So, Aniko, you're a classy girl. Thank you. Your man just essentially proposed, but to be your, your boyfriend, not... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how long have you guys been dating? Um, so, we were talking for about three months. We started dating two weeks ago. Okay, so three months... Yeah. Uh, how much of a long distance? How much was it in person? 
So he flew down here a few times. I haven't been able to really fly back since I've been here, but I am flying back okay. in two weeks. Gotcha. So I'll be able to see him then. So he's he's flying down from where? Boston. And just to be clear, who's paying for his flights? I'm making him pay for his flights. Oh, interesting. Dang, that, that's uh, crazy. Woman would make I'm a man for pay? my flight back home. Okay. And this is just me just doing some basic math here. This is me not coming at you. Collectively, over the last three months, all the dates, the dinners, the trips, everything, how much do you think that he spent all in, best guess, and how much do you think you've spent, best guess, all in? Okay, so I have the OTH card. What's that? It's on the house, so it's an influencer-only card where I get to use it to get a certain amount of credit for restaurants and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I put the bill down, but he pays tip. So you're paying for dinners, and he's just playing just the tip. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> you so see what really, I did there, gentlemen? The I did see. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Playing just the tip. Uh, uh, okay, and you don't feel weird that you're paying for everything? No, because with the car, they give me a certain credit every week that I can spend on certain places. All I have to do is just post for them. So it's basically, I'm not really paying for anything. Ah. Oh. It's like a brand deal. It's a pay-for-play thing. Yeah. You're getting paid to post pictures, life of an influencer, y'all. Yeah. Uh, anybody here have a card that you have randomly that you can get free meals on, by the way? Yeah, <laughs> Nat said her dad's. That's how that works. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Um, got it. Well, congrats. Thank That's you. an anomaly right there. Yeah. I'm just, you know, uh, scoping the lay of the land right here. Kay? Yes. How often are you paying for a man's dinner and drinks and taking him out? Never in my absolute life. Never? <laughs> so you're telling me if I took you out on a date, you wouldn't buy me dinner? Why? Then that defeats the purpose of you I'm a male prostitute. me on a date. I'm a male prostitute. <laughs> I need to be the fed. Of you I need to have some drinks. I need to see the world. Please take me out. I'm not the one. You're not the one. I'm okay. not the one. Typical woman, not willing to pay for a man. But by the way, uh, the man will pay for you though, right? Always. Always. Uh, this is where I'm going to use my friend McQueen to call her a what? A prostitute. Oh, my bad. I forgot. <laughs> I was, uh, uh, why will you not pay for anything with a man? I, I guess what I, I mean, I would flip the question. Why would you even, why are you even questioning it? Why, why would it's you not even, even think question, about McQueen. that? It's not even a question, McQueen. No, it's, it's. You know what I mean? It, well, it's you know, not even a question, to think about the, the caliber of women that you're asking. Like, those girls that you were asking can't even, like, touch a certain level of where, you know, we're at in our lives, so I can provide for myself. I can go take myself to a thousand dollar dinner. I and probably might have made more than you in the last couple mm -hmm. of years. So if you can't contribute equally to what I can do for myself or more, it's not worth my time or energy. However, your end game is to have sex, correct? Because you guys have touched on that in multiple. Yeah, we're not years. here to hear your jokes. Yes. No. Yeah. Exactly. So it's it's if if that's your end game, then why wouldn't you expect to pay top dollar? To ensure that you have the best possible experience. Yeah, which women is that called are, a. Well, listen to me. I'm I'm, 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 I'm not. It's I'm more not, of an investment, but you know. Okay, investment. Yeah. Um, I'm not refuting your point. All I'm saying is that by by definition, you're a prostitute because like I still <laughs> had to spend money to get to that pussy. I'm not. I agree with what you just you said. Yeah. You know. But you have to spend money for many things. If it's mm -hmm. to get pussy, if it's to get married, if it's to invest in your kids, it's still mm -hmm. an investment. To start a business. I think, well, we're yeah. not in the kids. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. I understand yeah. this. Correct. No, but I also, you know? but I think like, you have to also consider prostitution. Is it's I'm paying for a sexual act. Right. You yeah. investing into dinner and you investing into getting to know this person. That's dating. No, no, and no, I no, think no. Let me, let me correct you right there. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Adam and. Uh, yes. Mr. What was, what Malik. Malik. Malik, we can all, you know what I'm saying, agree on this. We are not paying to get to know you at first. We're paying to smash. Yes. I would beg to differ, though. I would I think yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 the man and the point it, he is in his life. Out. The if he's, if he's paying, wow. if he's just paying to sleep with a girl, that I don't think we can really often. truly know if we like you unless we buzz enough first. Well, that can be your opinion. There's, it's, people it's, out there, that, there's people it's, out there who don't feel like maybe they need that. Maybe they say, hey, small I want to date you. Though. Maybe I will invest into you until I want to date you. <laughs> and then maybe we get interactive and have fun later. Yeah, I mean, but I think it just depends on the person. But I can see why you say well, it's just, what you I'll say, say, I'll but say I this. don't agree I'll say it. this. McQueen is mostly right. But it all depends on why you're dating. Like, for instance, how old are you? I'm 29. Well, I just turned 30, actually. Brother, when I was 29... <laughs> Right there with you. You're right. Now I'm 42. <laughs> so um, do I take girls out for dinner, drinks, all the time? Uh, all good. Now, I will label a girl a short-term girl 
or a long-term girl. Like, I'll know that by the end of the first date. Like, all right, cool, I'm just going to buy her whatever she wants, take her whatever restaurant she wants, and I'm just going to do my thing. Or, yo, this is actually one of the few girls I'm going to put in the wifey category. I mean, even at 29, I assume that you have that disposition of like this is hit it and quit it or this is wifey sure. material okay yeah but- how do you distinguish with the, those two and how do you distinguish with how much you're paying um well regardless of if i'm trying to get to know her or not i'm gonna have to pay you know no like, doubt it's just how it is and I, that's not there's nothing wrong with that i do believe that a man should have to pay you know what i'm saying yeah. that's that's our role but all I'm saying is that women are prostitutes because of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's all I'm saying. But that's, uh, that's the hypothesis, yeah, and we're sticking just, to that's, it. That's just all I'm trying to get out there, you know? Is gotcha. It, it's just something to think about. But to answer your question, how do I distinguish, like, well, if a, I just see if, like, you know, how she, what her opinions are on things, or what her views are on things, like, if she understands, you know, gender roles, if she's able to be, you know, think from a logical mindset, if she's, you know, able to have respect and loyalty, you know, just the basic things that men want, then, like, I don't, I really don't see why I wouldn't keep providing and protecting for, and pr- protecting her, you know what I'm saying? But if she's just clearly a thoder, just, which is L.A. terms, just a thought, you know oh. what I'm saying? Then she's just out here getting fucked and going on yachts and doing all types of crazy shit, then mm-hmm. I'm definitely just trying to bust a nut, you know? Pastor. Respect. How about you, uh, Anna? Yeah. You're from Russia. Mm-hmm. You know, by the way, just for the record, how many genders are in Russia? Just two. Just two? Thank okay, because we just interviewed okay. Khabib the other day. That's why I've been like, and he went out on a record and I said like just two. I feel like my kid's going to be raised there. Then I'm going to come back here mm. because, like, what's going on right now here? It's, it's fucked up. <laughs> it's insane. Turn her up a little bit, Jorge. Mm. So yeah. uh, how does it work in Russia? Men take you on date. Who of pays course. for the date? The man always pays. The man always yes. take care of you. This is how it like, should be. And this is not called a prostitute because prostitution is when you pay for the sex. Mm. Okay. You don't know like what's exactly the, this word means. This is on you. But again, like if the man is, wants to like just to take go like to the dinner and he pays for the dinner, it, pays for the Uber, I don't know, for the flowers, he exactly having a good time with you already. So he, he pays for the both time, for, mm-hmm. s- for himself and for yours, like for the girl. Well, so you like hit the nail on the head time. and you said it multiple times. Mm-hmm. You said he's paying for your time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For now the what time, you for choose to do with time. your time, whether yeah, so it's, it's like, you know, bust down and uh, you know, actual prostitution or talk and get to know each other or... I would argue you know, that most men are just trying, are trying to fuck you at first. I that's, mean, then that's, you're gonna be disappointed because any girl that respects themselves, like, you want to take me to dinner, I don't care where we're going. I don't care how expensive the dinner is. I'm not fucking someone on the first date. That's like, fine. That's, that's it. That's totally And that's fine. a woman who respects themself. So, right. like, if yeah. you're taking someone to dinner and thinking, well, this girl's a prostitute because I'm going to fuck on the first date, like, you're really far off. Like, it's no, just not going to happen. I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, and I agree. All I'm saying is whether it's the first, second, third date, eventually we still have to pay to yeah, get pussy. But, like, we're giving you our time. It's not like you're paying to have... It's, you're not, it's not only about your pain, it's, it's not about how you call payment. it, you know? This yeah. is a it's not a physical not payment. It's not like a rose one thing or the other. It's not a physical payment, so why does the money leave my account it's, when I spend money? It's not one thing or the other. That, that physically it's leaves your account. It's not like yeah. giving it to it's us. It's not like, like you gave me a thousand dollars versus you took me on a thousand dollar date. That you also enjoyed. The point is that you also enjoyed. You know what I'm saying? For me to get to the point where I'm fucking you. So, I don't know. I mean, I... You already agreed in the beginning that it's I a think, logical yeah, point. Now I, you're trying no, to... I'm saying I think it's kind of like, I said it's dislogical is what I said. Like you it said it isn't a dislogical point. That's what like you said. It doesn't, it just like, it's really far out there. I'm conservative now. What's going on? It just isn't really far out there. How about there. this? I have an idea. If you guys want, tell me how many you guys are willing, because I want to hear your two. Uh, we we, do what? Before, so in order to flip the script, change the narrative, how about um, you guys start paying for all the dates, and then you can call the guy whatever you want to call him. You can call us prostitutes. How many guys are willing to do that? But we don't want dick that bad. He but, wants yeah. pussy that bad. We, we, I can so get like, complain about it. better than he ever could. <laughs> yeah. so you hear that? Why in the hell would I... Yeah. You hear what she said? She said, uh, I, I, I want pussy that bad. She's not lying. She's not lying. I do See, like so pussy. you can't complain about it. And you get prime it. pussy, or you get easy pussy. And now you have. There's levels to this in every game. It's and just like pussy. business in what general. Are, just to be clear, what are you? Prime. You're prime. Top notch. What makes you time prime top notch, Putang? Uh, I mean, I have 
everything that you could possibly ask for as far as brains, beauty, ambition. I would build my man up to be everything he wants to be in this world. I'm, I'm the best investment he would ever make in his life. And my shit's exclusive. I've invested in my body. I have a $150,000 body. No one barely touches me. Yes, you can see me on Instagram because I'm paid to do that, but nobody touches me unless a man, yes, does take care of me. I like bosses. I like millionaires. I like someone who's going to mentor me, teach me, and invest in me and get me to my highest level as well. And just to be clear, what's a $150,000 body? Uh, four BBLs, two breast augment, technically five BBLs, but so we're going to go with four. Uh, two breast augmentations, obviously Botox. Botox, lips and lip injections, and then I had the fat buckle removed out of my cheeks on my face. Wow. And how young are you? 28. 28. And what age do you want to get married? Uh, I don't necessarily have a time restraint on myself. I feel like God's going to, you know, make me cross paths with my future husband when that time is right. So you uh, I probably have about another 10 million in real estate that I need to develop before that um, so that I can reach the caliber of man that I want to be my future husband. Got it. And how convinced are you that a man is attracted to a girl with ambition, brains, $10 million in real estate, or just being nice and sweet? What do you think a man is most interested in, especially the man that you're looking for who's worth millions of dollars? Does he want a, 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 an ambitious boss babe or a nice, <clears throat> compliant, beautiful girl that doesn't give him headaches? What do you think most men like that would prefer? I don't, I'm not looking for what most men or most Well, you should be because you want like. that kind of guy. So you what should be. What do you mean? I, no, I'm looking so for I'm like asking, that, that one in a million where I'm, you're looking at like Grant and Elaine Cardone. You're looking at okay. like, you know, power couples, Jay-Z, Beyonce. Those people are building an empire together and they're equally contributing. So I respect on that, but let's play in reality right now. You're not going to marry Jay-Z or Grant Cardone for the sake of this conversation. You're going to marry some no, successful guy. No, my own. Guy. I'm going to have exactly, my own. <laughs> exactly. So that guy, how much is he worth? Close Make to up a number. A hundred million. Okay, so that guy that's worth a hundred million dollars, yes. go with me here now, yes. Kay. Does he want a boss babe who's trying to sell real estate or a trying? nice, lovely, compliant girl who's willing to get on his schedule? What do you think that guy wants? Think about it. Uh, well, I only date men that are at that high. No, caliber. no, no. I'm asking so, what uh, you think. I don't care what you think. I want to know. I think they want me. What he They're thinks. They're constantly pursuing me. What well, do you mean? Why, why aren't you married to one yet, though? Because I don't want to be married to one yet. I thought you just I've been said building you... my own business. But I thought I've you... been proposed to twice and turned it down. It wasn't the you right one. You turned down a guy worth $100 million twice? Mm, $50 million, but yes. Why in the world would you turn him down? Because I still have things to do. So you think that you're just going to go find another guy <laughs> worth $50 million is ready to wipe no, you up? No, I, like I said, $100 million. I like to okay, double down. Okay, so the $50 million guy was just too poor for you. No, he just wasn't the right one. <laughs> you do realize... There might be people in the comments calling you absolutely delusional right now. That's Do you fine. realize that? I don't care what they have to say. Okay. So I'm asking you I to know put my yourself, <laughs> take off the I'm a hot girl, paid 150 grand, boss, babe, okay. priceless punani. Take that off. Okay. Put your, put, Give her, give her your hat for a second, would you? No, Are you able to do I that? I don't have a haircut right okay, now. So, <laughs> so put, no, on, put, on, put, on, put on the $100 million guy's hat. Are you ready to play this game? Okay. Don't answer like you're K. Answer like you're, give me a guy's name that you'd be willing to marry. A guy's name. I'm sorry. Think of a name. Think of a uh, name. $100 million guy. I don't, I don't know. Let's call him Jay-Z. Let's, <laughs> let's call him Jay, because okay. we're not talking of Jay-Z. Jay is worth $100 million. Uh -huh. Okay, do you think, think about it, money. he cares how much money you make? No. You don't. Okay, let's stop there. Do you think he cares about your attitude? He, uh, to an extent, yeah. To an extent? Yeah. He cares a lot about you. He cares a lot about your attitude. Yeah. But I have a great attitude. Now, no, you okay. Don't. <laughs> oh, my God. You're not worth $100 million, so your opinion doesn't matter. Okay, so listen to me. You just said you so turned So only a person that's worth $100 million opinion yeah. matters? As far as me, like, being in an intimate relationship, okay. yeah. Let's put, let's put the hat back on. Okay. Jay. <laughs> so what is Jay looking for? Again, remove yourself and your real estate ambitions from the if equation. That J, what is Jay looking if for? If that Jay, if this particular Jay wants a simple Sarah, there's no Sarahs here, right? Yeah, Sarah. that's right. <laughs> sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. sorry, Sarah. You just you. pissed off the wrong girl. <laughs> <Sorry. girl. laughs> simple, it's like a, 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 a yeah, simple Sam. Sam, whatever, okay? Then you can find a million of those. You can go to the club, you can go find a girl in college, or it's something so simple like that. You can find them, a, like, every hundred girls is the same person like that, simple. 
I'm one in a million as well. And a hundred million dollar man usually likes the extraordinary. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm attracting the extraordinary. Can I ask you something? Can I Go ask, ahead, McQueen. Can I, what do you think that a man in general, like you said, a hundred million dollars is a guy that is worth talking McQueen, to. McQueen, I don't even know why you're talking to her right no, now. I know, you're I not even worth talking to her. It's okay, it's okay. You know what, get the fuck out of here, bro. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here, McQueen, bye. But listen, so what is it, do you, what do you think that a man, you know what I'm saying, it's worth a hundred million dollars, because clearly that's the only man that's worthy of talking. Um, <laughs> so, what do you think that, like what are the top three things that you think that man values? I think he values business. From who, and from you? No, in general, his life. And, okay. and he needs someone who understands that. Okay. And a, and a girl who's, who is just simple and will comply, she's there for the money. A woman who has it on her own isn't there just for the money because okay, I so have what's, my what's, own. What's the, sec what's the last two things besides the first one you just I made? would say family. They're looking for someone that they can procreate with, someone to take on their legacy. Do you think that someone they and want they to procreate have... with cares more about money than actually being a submissive, compliant woman? I'm sorry, what was the question? I'm saying, do you think that they want to pro procreate with someone who thinks like you as opposed to a compliant, submissive woman? I would, I would assume so, yes. That's, where, that's a fucking retarded-ass outlook. Okay, well, you shouldn't use the word retarded because there are people with disabilities I mean, you really in the world. I mean, you shouldn't say that you know, someone who's not worth $100 million shouldn't be worthy of talking, but you know, hey, you, you did. So it is what it is, you know? But hey, you know, like I said, you, know, you have your opinions, and you know, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just putting this out there that it's like, that's not what men value. They okay. don't want like a aggressive, you know, dominant woman that cares more about money and real estate and millions of dollars as opposed to being a respectful, loyal, compliant woman. They just don't. Okay. I'm trying to help you out because you know you just turn down a, a nigga that's worth fifty million dollars, yeah. acting like they just down the street, like you know what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, would you say that you're agreeable? To no, just in general, would you say you're more agreeable or more disagreeable? Depends on the in topic. general, like in topic. so. For instance, if you ask me, Adam, are you agreeable or disagreeable? I'm disagreeable as fuck. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm okay. deceptive. Okay, so you too. I'm very deceptive. Yeah. Okay, so you too. Why am I disagreeable? Because if I see some, ch I was like, yo, I don't like how the cameras are set up. Yo, can we move these chairs? Yo, put the move. Put the yeah. queen's yeah. ass yeah. in the middle right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the reason that I've killed it in sales and doing what I do is just because I'm not. I don't go along with the flow. Yep. Yeah. I do my thing. Now here's my question to you: If that dude comes along, do you think he wants an agreeable woman or a non-agreeable, disagreeable woman? That dude with our $100 million. What do you want? I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Yeah, you better fucking agree, okay? Okay. Uh, <laughs> if I'm worth $100 million and I'm like, hey, baby, I need you to do this, don't be like, why am I doing this? I'll be like, all right, so get me something. Marissa, get your ass over here. Now you're next. Because that dude, you know what he has? He's got, ready, wait for it, options. I know. So if you don't get on his page, th you said, McQueen, you don't even got $100 million. Why are you I know, man. I, dude, I don't even know why <laughs> you're here right now, player. Here, I, know. <laughs> so, I don't even know how the fuck I got here. I hear what you're saying. You got confidence. You got your swag. You spent 150 grand on your body. Do your thing, whatever. I'm just letting you know, sweetheart, the more disagreeable you get, the more you'll be packing your shit up at that dude's house, letting I, you know. I never lived with a man. So. You've never even lived with a dude? Well, it's clear that so you So you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. McQueen, how many girls have you kicked out of your house? Whoa. Scrubs. I mean, I kicked out quite a few, yeah. uh, but I've never lived with any. So. Okay. Oh. Well, uh, you know, they say breaking up is hard to do. Uh, packing up is hard to do, too. So I paid a lot of money for movers, but that's because these women ended up being, ready, wait for it, disagreeable. Mm. So anyway, just... Uh, Work on that. Yeah. Anyway, th little word to the wise. Maybe you and McQueen will hit it off after the show. Yeah, maybe. You know what I'm Rose, I just need you've, a... been, you've been married. Yes. What advice do you have for this lovely boss babe right here? <sighs> um, I kind of was in that same mindset where, like, I wanted a guy with money, and I tried to build him up. I did all that. And, you know, it's, it's not even about the money for me. It's just more of, like, building a family and just, you know, living happily because mm -hmm. I have kids, right? So, so speak to her. What advice would you have for her? Happiness to me is like with my kids, not really with the man, 
but the man that I was married to wasn't the one for me. Like I had expectations, and he didn't meet those expectations. And like I like fifty million dollars. No. No, 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 no. Hundred million. It was just fifty-fifty. But anyways, okay. um, you Can know. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> yeah. If he was the right man, yeah. Do you feel like that combination with your kids would have been the most ideal life? Yeah, I think if we both would have on the same page about like financial stuff, we would have survived. Yeah. But, but he I'm was saying, immature. Like, if he I was, was like your, the man that you know you, I, like the ideal man that you picture in your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, so you guys, you guys said you guys weren't on the same page and mm -hmm. it didn't work out, and that's fine. I mean, it does, it's, I'm sorry that that happened, but that's fine. if he was that guy. Do you think that that is like, you know, the peak happiness for a woman is having a man that they really love and a strong, you know, disciplined leader man yeah. and kids? Do you think that's like, yeah, the yeah, because I mean, a, a woman, you want a man to be your provider, your protector. Right. And when you have that and your kids, you're fulfilled. Exactly. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, speaking of provider and protector, let's move on to the next topic. I didn't forget about you. you're going to come next, I swear. Uh, speaking of provider and protector, how many of you guys are familiar with this guy called Andrew Tate? <laughs> Anyone here not familiar? Raise your hand if you've never even heard of him. I've heard of him, but I've okay. never really, like, gotten well, to it. Well, you know, we have, you know, Andrew Tate lives in Romania. We've done multiple interviews with him. I would consider him a friend at this point, right? Uh, respect to the Tate. But we have the L.A. slash Miami version oh. of Andrew Tate here on the podcast right now. He, he goes by McQueen oh. while he's here. <laughs> so McQueen, my dude... Uh, went out around Miami. It looked like it was Brickell City Center uh, Using Andrew Tate's pickup lines to pick up some ladies. I did so <laughs> I did that I did I did, <laughs> I did. so Malik I believe we have some clips of that video you could play it at 1.25 I believe we have four different clips and we'll get everyone's reaction on the other side Let me let us know if you guys would fall for McQueen aka the top G hey the top nigga <laughs> I can't say that, you know, but, but you said it, so I will uh, try and lie to get some pussy nowadays, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I am a man, I am competent, so I wanted to let you know, girl, you look good. I don't want to lie. You know I want to f but I don't want to try. Oh, you have a boyfriend. I do. Turn okay. it up. Well, what color is his Bugatti? He doesn't have a Bugatti. Oh, I suspect it as such, you know, because he's a broke boy and I'm rich in my essence and my smell and everything that defines me as a man. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. How you doing? Hi. Hi, uh, my name's McQueen. I just came over because I thought you were married. This girl's cute as shit, by the way. Mary. Mary and I had a little lamb. Okay, okay. Yeah. Where are you walking to right now? I'm going yeah. to Bloomingdale's. Michelle, sure you look really nice in the sundress. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. What you staring me up and down like that for? You like what you see? A little bit, yeah. Oh, she said, oh, man. Oh, man. Michelle, oh, yeah. I like what I see, too. You know what I'm saying? I just want to let you know that I've escaped the Matrix. And now that I've done so, I'm looking for a woman to spread my seed with. Because life without babies is half a nine. How do you feel about that? <laughs> are you okay? What do you mean, am I okay? Like, are you okay? Are you okay? Okay. <laughs> What are you talking about? Now, I don't have to say much about myself. I'm sure you probably think that I'm cute. Is this true? Yeah, you're cute. Sure. She should say, yeah, you're cute. Okay. Yeah, sure. you what, you want to look at my ass or something? Okay. Oh, there you it know is. Oh. You know what, what you want to do? You know what I'm saying? Hey, okay. I'll talk to you. Okay, for sure. What color is your punani? Your punani. <laughs> you know, this, this is like, you know, questions that I got I to do with Next one, Malik. Really. Because like, I can't just, you know, get with any girl. You know, a lot of girls are sluts. Very, very common to the kids in the name. Top G. The top of all's top is G. Any G that you can think of, I'm on top of that nigga. How do you feel about me uh, wanting to f*** you? Well, I have a boyfriend. When are you going to stop telling lies now, girl? You know what I'm saying? Because I don't think you would be sitting there talking to me right now if you truly had a boyfriend. Okay, see, I knew the lies. The last that's why I continue to talk. Because I'm not even hearing that shit. If your supposed boyfriend was to see you talking to a and then later on I'll hit you up and then you'll say, we'll catch up. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, but listen to me. I just want to let you know that going forward, if this turns into a relationship, I could be madly in love with you. I could be willing to die for you. I could be willing to run through walls for you. Okay. Okay? We'll see. But I will still fuck that bitch. Oh my Watch me. Okay? Bye. All right, bye. Have a nice day. To me, you guys, you don't know? The top G McQueen in the house. Uh, by the way, how did it work out with any of those ladies? How many numbers did you actually get? How many follow-ups did you get? I think I got like a few that day. Um, but I don't, uh, I don't ever pursue the girls afterwards anymore. Never. Just, I mean, not never, but not anymore just because like, I just focused on work. Do you remember the girl's name in the brown by any chance? I don't. No. Yeah. No, I just, she looks like somebody I know. That's all I'm looks saying. Looks like somebody you want to bust down. Yeah. Huh? Hey, you know, I'm just, if she's uh, uh, agreeable, if yeah. you know what I'm saying. So how did it all work out for you being the top G? Were the ladies receptive to it? Were they, like, kind of thrown off? How did it go? I think you can get away with anything if you say with enough confidence, you know? Totally agree with and you. And, like, I, so it's, it's, it's like if someone else was to just, like, shave their head bald and walk outside and say what I was saying, they would 
get spit on, slapped, walked away, like all types of crazy shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I, I don't know. I, I would like to say that I, I say things with a certain energy that does, that comes off not like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's more low. So like, okay, you kind of just got to laugh at me, you know, or laugh with me. Um, and I think girls like that. I think girls like the fact that you can, if you're just confident and comfortable with yourself, you can really say anything. It kind of just goes right over their head, you know? Yes, of course, I got rejected a lot that day, but, you know, those, as you can see from those clips, that they were pretty receptive. We didn't show those in the highlight reel, though. Yeah, yeah, edit those yeah, out, It's Blair. okay, though. I mean, th those are funny, too. It's just of course. Shows, yeah. So, uh, ladies, by, by respect to you, I, like, uh, how many men on the street interviews have I done? You've done a hundred. Like a million. Yeah, so, the, what transcends anything above money, materials, um, any sort of game, any sort of, you know, looking good or dressing good is just genuine confidence and riz and vibe. And you, you got it. You got Thank that you. sauce, bro. So ladies, the top G, McQueen, rolls up on you. He's like, hey, what's up? You know, what color is your that night? Whatever it is, you know. Uh, one of the things that you said is that, you know, a lot of women want men to be honest with them. Yeah. Uh, you know, and reveal their actual intentions. You were brutally honest with these women, and you know, um, ladies, how would you feel if a guy rolled up to you and was like, with this type of vibe, hey, here's what I'm looking for, what's up, you, what you got for me? How about you, Aspen? How would you respond to swag like that? I think it would scare me. It would scare <laughs> me off a little bit. Really? I don't yeah. blame you. All that at once, just right off the bat. Like, yeah. We didn't, we didn't get to know each other, like, we didn't hang out. Nothing, You're just, just rolled up. You're just down the street. <laughs> it would, it would scare Use the me mic. Off. It would scare me off. Why would it scare you? Because I'm very closed in. Um, I feel like I have to really get to know someone before I, like, I open up to them. I'm very shy, so. Yeah. Yeah. No, if someone it. was shouting at me from the street, honestly, I wouldn't even say anything. I would just keep walking. No, I got a lot of those that day, so I, yeah. I believe you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Marissa, how would you respond to that? Um, I agree with Aspen. It would scare me a little bit. I'd probably just keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> we got two scared girls. All right, you keep walking. Nat, how would you do? I would laugh. You'd be that girl to be like, are you all good? Yeah. Are, you all right? <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> no, yeah, I would probably laugh, say you're funny, and, you know, have a good day. Right. I would just okay. respectfully, like, remove myself. How yeah. many of you girls would you give the number? Would you give the number with confidence like that? Would I give out my number? Yeah, so a guy like that, if he said, by the way, just let me get your number. Would you I'd give, give him, it? I give him a fake number. Fake number. Yeah, just well, to, like, a fake number. How about you, Marissa? You giving a real number or a fake mm, number? No, I'm just no spare change. Oh, no <laughs> spare change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you giving sorry, a number sorry. or no? no I'll give you a you buy you Tim and Instagram. Okay. You okay. <laughs> McQueen, what about your girlfriend Kay? I mean, obviously know the answer because you're not worth 100 mil yet. You're getting there. You're 99 away. Yeah. Uh, Kay, yeah. the guy with that much confidence swag rolls up on you. How do you respond? Oh, I would have been laughing my ass off, honestly. Mm -hmm. I would have been like, that's, that's hilarious. Um, but actually, I don't know. If it was happening to me, I might feel different. Watching it happen to other people is funny, but mm -hmm. okay. in the moment, I, in the moment you actually sure. would have been receptive to it. No, oh, no, no, definitely not that. I just don't know if I would have been like I think avoiding all eye contact, like walk away, like yeah. just, you know. So which one is it? Which one? You just said that you would you would laugh and you thought it was. I funny. think I would laugh, but <laughs> it would be like your vibe. Like if you approached me, I don't know how you were like rolling up on but these women. But listen to me, I'm the top like... nigga. I'm definitely worth over hundred million in that situation. Yeah, <laughs> top G. So that means I'm qualified to talk to such as Danzel like yourself, I don't know, right? Hundred million dollar <laughs> men don't walk around the mall. Huh? Approaching random women like that. You, you know? say you don't walk around the mall approaching women like that? <laughs> no, hundred million dollar so men I... don't. Okay, but how do you know? How do you know what this $100 million dollar man do does that. with his time? They don't have time to do that. Oh, hey, yeah. but you have, okay. are you married to one right now? Mm -hmm. So how would you know what he does with his time? I know, trust me. How do you, oh. how do you know? I know. <laughs> you guys are falling in love right there. Right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> would, would he get the number, Kay? <laughs> would he get no, the no, number? No, no. I'd maybe just slide him a business card. Like, if you're looking to buy or sell, invest in real estate. You're looking to buy some real estate, Top G, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, there we go. Don't call me until you get your game up, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you, you get yourself, you go make something of yourself right. there, homie. <laughs> all right, very cool. Aniko. Hello. Some guy rolls up with you. He's all swagged up. He's a Top G. He's going to ask you what color. You, you know, your Bugatti is, he's going to uh, have his unmatched perspicacity with his unmatched uh, unfatigability, and he's going to be a feared uh, opponent in any realm, in any endeavor. I believe that's how it goes. Uh, would you get, would he, could he get the number? I feel like when people flex like that, and that kind of mannerism, that is just all a facade. Because I know people like that. They say, I got this. I just bought five Rolexes last week. <laughs> Show me 
Show me the bank account. Show me receipts. Show me, show me receipts. I need to know before you're actually saying all that stuff to me. But in that scenario where it's like whatever, like I don't really care. I would like give that same energy back. Right. I would just mm -hmm. be goofing around with them, saying like, oh, I got this, 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 and this, and this, and just see how they react. Yeah. Okay. So can you get the number? No. Okay. <laughs> So the top G is striking out here. I don't know. Bro. Yeah, they, so they all say that. I'm pretty sure if you put all the girls in the video that gave you the number and you put them here and you ask them the same question, they would say the same yeah. shit. Hindsight you know? is 2020. Yeah. Aniko, help us out. There's, I, there's no <coughs> Russian dude that's got swag like this. I've met the Russians. They talk. <laughs> they confidence. They, they fight good. But they don't got the swag like that. They ain't talking like that. True or so, false? Um, Who's got more swag? American men? Yeah, or American, Russian but men. like you know, Russians they're more like straightforward, I guess. Yeah, they just pull up with the flowers. Yeah, like, I'm taking you to the date. Oh, that's gotcha. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. No sweat, it's date time. You're late, don't die. Yeah. Okay, like this time get ready. I tell you, eight o'clock, it's eight oh one. Let's get fucking uh, yes. uh, have a little of this snowness like on your mouth. <laughs> okay, so yeah. who's got more swag, Americans or Russians? Americans, okay, do you like anyway. swag? It's like balance, you know, like this type of thing. No, because it's not only you and Brico walking like this. And I saw that and I was like, no, thank you. Yeah. So it's never like <laughs> actually like, no, like I would just keep going. Like, I don't like things like that. OK, so he's not getting the number. No, I, don't know. I think you guys are all liars. Yeah. McQueen rolls up no, on no, you on no, the no, street. No, he's going to get the number. By the way, there's one girl in the video who's a little shorty with a big booty who was here last week. Oh, um. Raquel. Yeah, she. I, uh, I think you rolled up on funny. her, and she <laughs> thinks she said she had a boyfriend. Yeah. But I'm this pretty... video was shot in L.A. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. It yeah. looks like Brickle City Center. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Doesn't it look like? Okay. Wow. And my bad, dog. So? Yeah, no, I was just my saying, bad, yeah. dog. Because I mean, isn't City Center outdoors? Yeah. Brickle yeah, City Center. Yeah. 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 yeah it looks like exactly like it. Yeah. Uh, all right. So then, that I don't know that girl. Looks like someone else I know. How about you, Rose? You know, you're single now, you're looking to have a good time. The top G rolls up, he's about to put your ass in the Bugatti, take you around the world on his jet. Is he I getting the number? I don't believe it. No, I don't believe it. And I'd probably give him a fake number. Yeah. yeah. Damn. I don't believe it. I feel like it's too fake. Mm -hmm. You know, a real man is smooth. That's not smooth, yeah. that's aggressive. I don't like that. I would've, my bank account would have disagreed. Sarah, save anything. our guy here. <laughs> I if would the top laugh. G of Miami rolled up, <laughs> can you get the number? I would What's laugh. It would be really funny. Like, it would definitely make me laugh. But, like, I wouldn't take you seriously. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't like when, when right. men are really flashy. I think they're full of crap when they're really flashy and bragging about what they have. Like, so can I just make, go on the record here? Okay, finish your statement. I was go ahead. Say, you would make me laugh, but no, I yeah. wouldn't give out my phone number. I'm also really picky about giving out my phone number. Can I just call every single one of you lovely ladies here a goddamn liar? You can okay? call me a liar, no. but I really A six foot two, good looking, funny, charismatic, swagged out dude rolls up on you and makes you laugh and has fun with you and is not too aggressive, but he's not a pussy and he clearly has confidence. He's gonna get the number, yeah. okay? I'm just letting you guys know. That's the truth. I'm letting you guys know. It's funny how it's I don't like to give out my still number. Trying to yeah. 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 He got yeah. the number. Is that approach now? I think yeah. maybe like I would give out my Instagram. Guys, just for the record here, he was playing a character. That's what I'm saying. That wasn't I mean, his yeah. real I think, game. I think also too, it's like, it's funny, I, I noticed a lot of them say, I wouldn't take him seriously, I wouldn't believe it. I mean, I think most of those girls in the video didn't believe me either. Yeah. Yes. I just think they understood sure. that I was, I was fucking retarded. Yeah, yeah it was funny. Funny. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Boy. And it was like, okay, I Guys, read the room. Yeah, I respect the fact yeah, that this yeah. guy is super funny and confident. He's clearly joking oh, yeah. around. Well, yeah, he clearly doesn't, You know what I'm saying? And then so like, they gave me the number based off of that. Cool. I don't think any of them really thought that I was like. But also like, I wouldn't, I, I, I don't like, like I don't know. I don't, I don't like. I like when men can make me laugh, but like I don't like when they're too goofy. Like yeah. because if yeah. you're too goofy, I'm not really gonna yeah. trust you to like yeah. lead me in something. So I don't really wanna. I'm not really interested. Yeah. I understand. From a romantic standpoint, and I know like you might make exactly me laugh. Like, like right. we'll definitely like joke yeah. back and forth. You know what I'm saying? But like, you'd be it'd be like too goofy for me. No, I get it. Yeah. Totally. All right. So none of y'all are going home with the top G. Y'all just fucked up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> with that being said, real quick, we're gonna get into some super chats and we'll get into the next topic. This is where Natalia is going to shine. Hooked on phonics work for her. You know that. <laughs> Nat, let's get some super chats. Uh, and if any questions for our friend McQueen, we'll answer those either now or at the end of the show. Let's see what we got in the super chats. Nat, go ahead for it. Thank you for the super chats. First, we have Beaten Cheeks in the house. My dude. With one of the biggest chats, $50. He said, McQueen, too bad I missed out with you in Miami. Can't wait with... 
can't hang with Zerka again. That was too much. Coming back soon. May hit up Adam if he answers my text in Miami. It's too wild for me. I'm staying in Tampa, Orlando area <laughs> until Miami. Thought, uh, thoughts find God. <laughs> Bean Cheeks is that nigga, man. Yeah. yeah. We you met him. him. We yeah, met him. He's commenting. Oh, he's super chatted on my on my podcast, too. That yeah. dude's dope. Yeah, I fuck with that guy. He's like, right. we met him at a. Yeah, at he our was event. here recently. He sat front row. Uh, then we he have. Goes our, by Mr. Cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Don Juan play at zero. K. Jenkins is sober. What a sugar baby. Fox One, actual chick in red. Looks. Fuck out of here. Then we have Glenn Lawrence. <laughs> Sorry. Then we have Glenn Lawrence. Uh, are you submissive? Are you respectful? Are you argumentative? Do you do you see yourself as a weaker vessel? If the answer is no, then your 150 guy body doesn't mean anything. Then we have Be Easy 716. I build up my man. Two seconds later, I I like bosses and millionaires. It contradicts. How do you build up someone who's already up? Then we have the Out of Pocket Variety Show. Either life. Lipo Lapel Panelli <laughs> is a paid actor, or she legitimately needs to be taken to a ward once the show's over. Salute my homie McQueen. Let me see if we have any more last ones. Then we have, all right, that's it for Super Chats. Thanks for the Super Chats, guys. Give us some questions. I think we should give our panel a question so we can answer them. Okay. And then let's get into the rest of the topics. Um, okay, cool. So we talked about um, Tate just now. Um, let's talk about the Paul brothers because they've been in the news lately. By the way, just for the record, we showed you guys pictures of uh, the Tates. Well, I mean, that was in the video. Just so you ladies understand, here are the Tate brothers and then here are the Paul brothers. Malik, we got images of those guys. Here are the Tates, punch in. Does anyone here not know these guys? Okay. <laughs> silence. So that oh, means silence. Them. They're agreeing. Have any uh, of you met him? No, no, I'm not no. asking if you met them. You've okay. met them? Well, you guys have I thought that's why you invited me here. It's because why? Because I went viral with him on Fresh and Fit. Oh, yeah, that oh. was you. Yeah. I thought you were that girl. I'm really fucking aware of that. Yes. Like, I literally. Okay, hold like, on. Hold on. Did you give me. Okay, hold like, on. Back yeah. up a second. You're the girl that claimed that she met Myra on a Sugar Daddy website? Oh, I have a, do you want to, me to read the screenshots of his I profile? No, we're good. Right now. It's actually really funny. I, I know who you I, are I was now. Like, I, I get it now. I did meet him on a I Sugar Daddy website. I get it now. I get oh. it now. And I have his profile screenshotted so we can read every okay. corny <laughs> thing he's You look different. I love that. You look different. Her um, hair's back. Your yeah. hair's not You were down. wearing black in that outfit. In I'm that, in that, always black like my soul. Gotcha. your hair was different Black like your soul. Very interesting. Okay. Now it makes sense. Yeah. Now it's all making sense here. My full circle. Uh, our friend Kay. Got it. And who was your homegirl? I don't want to talk about that. No, 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 no. If you're going to talk no, about Myron like that, let's talk order. about no, your homegirl. I have a restraining order right now, yeah. and it's done. The girl with all the tattoos? It. it doesn't make any sense. We're not associated. Tate was a really great guy afterwards. Him and, honestly, Fresh were very respectful to me. And, I mean, we're all good now, but... It's just a lot of You have high, a straining order against that one yeah. girl yes. with all the tattoos. High profile opinions, yeah. you know, in one room. And I think it's a lot of alpha energy. And, and honestly, I was new to Miami when that podcast went viral. Mm. I was hanging out with the wrong people, dancing with the devil, doing shit I shouldn't have been doing, mm. completely consumed by things that were not of high importance to me. And since then, I've, you know, really humbled myself, learned a lot of lessons. And now I'm associated with the right people building my business in the appropriate manner. So, so how much I'm accountable guys. for being well good for you for yeah. being accountable out of line um, in some aspects you know but it, others I had high points it's with, funny because so. I absolutely know the clip do you know yes. this clip it, you, uh, it was I don't know it was a disaster I think there's like a million clips though to be you honest said that, you yeah. said so that many. someone needs to spend ten thousand dollars to hang out with you something like that not, not exactly no for your time you need to be compensated you for your then? time well, I said that. Well, if you I bumped was going it up to, to have, 100 million, so that's to good. Have, yeah, I'm moving up in the world, ladies. Double down. Yeah. Yeah. I told you there's levels Double to down. this. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, but at least you're having some accountability because you look pretty. Uh, how do we say? Uh, oh, you think they? I mean, not guys, good. Well, towards the end of the night, after two hours of drinking, everyone's taking shots and everyone's getting crazy. I mean, it's it's natural yeah. for things to get in, into high. Well, that's why I tell Joey he's got to have these girls drinking more alcohol over here. But Joey's scared to give but you guys drinks. But every single one of them told me that we had extremely valuable points in the beginning right. and that we were seeing eye to eye in a lot of things. And then mm -hmm. it just kind of went south after I tried to out Myron and he got upset and mm -hmm. you know he didn't want his ego bruised. So 
Well, listen, I, I will say this. Myron, who's been here, done multiple contacts with that guys. If uh, you, you, you get into a thousand fights, you get one or two cuts or scrapes, you're still a fucking gangster. You won 99.9% .9 of the fight. So maybe you got him in one little thing. Maybe. But I guarantee you that he's going to get the best out of you and or most people 99.9% .9 of the time. Everyone will catch an L every once in a while. I don't even know what happened with you guys. I'm not even trying to get into it. But that guy is also a fucking G. Um, with that being said, you also know the Paul brothers over here. Paul brothers. Okay. Uh, I believe we have a picture. You know these two guys. Anybody not know these guys? Seen them. Okay. Um, for you ladies, since we're having, we're talking about dating and uh, track record and who's uh, who you've been with, uh, if you could only be with two of the brothers, meaning like you look back and you were with, all right, I used to date Andrew Tate or Tristan Tate, all right, or I dated Logan Paul uh, or uh, Jake Paul, all right, who... Uh, who would you rather be associated with? Do you understand what I'm saying, ladies? Mm -hmm. So your body count, to put it bluntly, who would you um, prefer to have on your resume, Rose? The Tates or the Pauls? Uh, the Pauls. The Pauls. Yeah. Why is that? Um, I don't know. I just don't really notate that much to speak on him. So. Okay, so you're going with the Pauls. Yeah. How about you, Aspen? The Tates all the way. The Tates all the way. Why the Tates? They're very respectful. Really? Have you met mm -hmm. them? No. But you can just tell by the vibe? Absolutely. Okay, That's but you just turned messages. him down when he tried to hit on you. You were too, a little too scared. That is not Top G. Let's not insult the top nigger. Come on. Okay. Tell him a queen. I'm the top nigger, not Top G. So you're <laughs> absolutely correct. Exactly. Okay. We've met before. Close in letters. <laughs> you said what? I've met McQueen before. Where have you met McQueen? At Icy's birthday. I do remember you. Oh, Icy? Yeah. yeah. Icy's a sweetheart. Yeah. We like Icy. Yeah, How about you, Sarah? Who are you going with? You the Tates or the Pauls? You like the Tates? Yeah, I do. You're going with the Tates. So we got yeah. Tates for two. We got Pauls for one. How about you, Anna? Um, I would say uh, Pauls. Because I, I met Logan, and he was pretty calm and stuff. So I mean, I mean like... Okay, so we got two and bit. two. Yeah. Aniko? I'm going to say the Tates, just because of the Pauls dating track record. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Kay, how would you like to answer this one? It's a hard one for me. Um... I feel like the Pauls are more like husband material, but the Tates would probably be better like in bed. So who are you picking? <laughs> uh, They're both worth $100 million, so there, that should be an easy answer right there. We're going to go with the Tates. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, Marissa. Um, I would have to say the Tate brothers as well. Okay. Yes. Natalia Del Valle. I would marry my husband. I don't want to pick. I... I'm not moving on until you pick. Now, the whole show is going to stop. Come to a screeching halt. It's going to get real awkward. Who do I want on my team? Who are you picking that's on your body count track record? I don't own a body count, but I would pick the Tates on my team. Okay. Okay. Just count. so you know, the whole show would have stopped until we made it real fucking okay. awkward for you. Okay. So I'm glad that you answered that. You're welcome. By the way, McQueen. What's up? If those two, uh, I, I'm going to show you a clip right now, but if the Tates and the Pauls <laughs> Walk into a bar. There's no cameras. There's no referees. There's no rules. The Tates are beating the blood yeah, out of them. The you think so? Out, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. The Tates are beating the absolute yeah. shit out of both of their ass. Okay, gotcha. So Malik, we have this clip with Tristan. I asked Tristan that exact question. So here we were. This is when we were in Romania, and Patrick and I flew to interview uh, the Tate brothers. Uh, we've inter interviewed Andrew, and then we interviewed Tristan. This is the question that I asked Tristan. Make sure volume's on. Say you're in a bar, there's no cameras, there's no judges, there's no yeah. rules. Tate brothers walk in the bar, Paul brothers walk in the bar. Who walks out? Me and my brother. Every single time. I actually want to put one thing straight. I have no beef with the Paul brothers. And I don't even think my brother does either. I will go as far as to say I really like Jake Paul. Hmm. Me and my brother are bigger than the Paul brothers, more fight experience than the Paul brothers. I've taken more, more punches than the Paul brothers. Who would win the fight? I feel like that's a juvenile question to ask because if I saw Jake Paul, I'd buy him a drink. I like Jake. Logan, not so much. But Jake is a hardworking young man who has put it all on the line and gets in the ring against people vastly more experienced than himself in combat sports. He fought Tommy Fury, who's a vastly more experienced mm -hmm. boxer. And I don't feel there's any beef between me and the Paul brothers. I sat down and had drinks with Jake. Let's just say you're okay, in a bar. Cool. So, uh... 
Tristan sort of answered himself. So most of you, I would say 70% of the panel, picked the Tates over the Paul brothers. And then McQueen, you had the deciding vote. So yeah. we're going with the Tates on this one. Yeah. By the way, guys, uh, shifting gears. Have you seen, you know, we're sort of manufacturing beef between the Tates and the Pauls just because they're two of the most famous brothers in the world. They both blew up on social media. So it's kind of, you know, apropos to even suggest these types of things, especially since the Tates are kickboxers, fighters, the, the Paul brothers are fighting as well. But we're not manufacturing this beef. There actually seems to be actual beef, or so we think, between the Paul brothers. So I'm not sure if you've seen recently that Jake Paul, after his fight that he recently was with, uh, who did he knock out? The D uh, not knock out, but he beat Nate Diaz. Uh, Nate Diaz. He went on um, Logan's podcast, right, Impulsive, and they confronted each other. And it was actually pretty aggressive. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that it was sort of manufactured for views. But here's um, Jake on Logan's podcast, Impulsive, confronting each other. And this comes down to money, business, mm. family, mm. all that and above. Here's the clip. Kicked out if I brought a prime bottle to the stadium. That's fucking ridiculous, dude. Yeah, get over it. Meanwhile, Come on, me I'm your brother building a oh, business. Oh, yeah, you, you're my brother building who's, a business. You love to play both sides, who's bro. Yielded What's here? the what other you side play of both sides. Side of my You play both sides, What's and it's the like you want to partner with Dana White and KSI. My life is my life. Your life is your life. I'm going to take these opportunities. When we as brothers no longer become additive to each other, and it feels like you or I are trying to take from one another. Well, when it's convenient for you, we're brothers, but then when it's not, you do the exact opposite of like, we are completely separate, so like, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do as well. I don't know if I always have to yield and bend my personal ways because we are brothers and that's the sole reason. They said I would get kicked out if I brought okay. a crime box. So, the they're brothers. They both blew up on the internet, social media. They're both fighting. You know, uh, you got Jake Paul fighting all sorts of uh, UFC guys. You have Logan that's doing WWE stuff. He's fighting Mayweather. They both made, it, made a name for themselves. And just for the record, respect to those guys. No yeah, doubt. Okay. Sure. Uh, we've been in touch with both those camps for quite some time. I'm sure we'll do something at some point. But here's the point. Does anybody here think that any of that beef is made up or manufactured? Or does it seem real? I think it seems real. It seems real. Yeah, anyone? Think real. Anyone real. think it's fake? Mm -mm. Show of hands if you think it's fake. I hope not. You think it's fake, Malik? Yeah. You think it's fake? Yeah. Okay. Show of hands if you actually think that there's real sort of... I, I think that it's real, but I do think that it is on purposely put out into the public knowing yeah. that it's going to yeah. create controversy, yeah. you know? So it's really real, so let's hype it up yes. mm -hmm. to get that yeah. extra... Yeah. Additive, like Which is smart, you know. Yeah. 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 So I think at one point they're probably going to fight each other. At one point, okay. Yeah. By the way, Aww. if you guys don't think it's real, here's a clip of Logan on Andrew Schultz podcast doubling down on the real beef. Check this out. Video on YouTube is a diss track of uh, my brother. It went, Wait, it went you were actually beef. beefing? Huh? Uh, it was yeah. real. It was real beef. Like oh. for real, for real. One thousand percent real. Not e not not a sliver of that was fake. Why didn't you like each other? What was the deal? Um, so we both were daily vlogging at the time. It was kind of a competition. We were both growing at, a, at an extremely fast rate. Probably also because of each other, right? right. Like, we, like, but the competition bred this competing fandoms. And, oh. and we, we both had the work ethic to do the thing every day. He would prank me in like real life, and I wouldn't like it. And I'd get angry in real life, and then it, it translates when you make content because you're actually getting angry at each other, and you're competing with each other. And it's like, bro, we were early 20s, like we didn't we didn't understand the power of someone who will like always ride with you for the rest of your life. So interesting. So McQueen, you know they say that uh, uh, blood is thicker than water, but they also say that family and business doesn't mix. Mm. So I know you just said that it was mostly real, but based on even that response right there. Give some, you, you have any brothers, you have any siblings, you have, do you have any do. business with any family? I, I have, yes. Okay. Oh. So from your perspective, like, they're both crushing it, they're both killing it, but you know that ego gets involved. You know, Logan got upset because, speaking of business, he couldn't even bring his prime energy drink into the fight. Mm -hmm. And then Jake was like, yo, too fucking bad. Like, I've got partners myself. I think the partner might have been Celsius. I don't know. So there's money involved. There's millions of dollars on the table here. You know, blood is thicker than water. He said that even in the clip, you know, sometimes it's uh, 
you know, you're my brother when it's convenient for you, but not when it's not convenient for you. Yeah. And you kind of play the business thing. So put yourself as a fly on the wall in the room or even as a businessman who's made it on YouTube. How do you process what's going on here? I think that last part you said right there where, where Jake mentioned he's a brother when it's convenient for him is exactly why he didn't make an effort. And he's like, his attitude is like, I don't give a fuck if you brought Prime over because clearly it's only convenient for you to be a brother when it's convenient for you. So I'm going to continue to do whatever the fuck is best for me. I feel like if their relationship was like the Tates, you know, he would have made an effort to allow him to promote his brand mm -hmm. at the fight. Because it's like, okay, you know what I'm saying? We're both on the same page in terms of like, we're brothers. We're gonna do whatever we can to support each other in any way, shape or form. And um, I feel bad for Jake because you can tell in that clip right there where he said, I don't think that um, I, I should have to bend over to support you. I, I don't know if those are his exact words, but. When he said that, you could tell that on his face, it was like, damn, like, you just going to say that? Like, I'm your, bro I'm your blood brother, mm -hmm. and you just told me that I don't think I have to bend over to, you know, pretty much support you in, any, in every single situation. It's if, so you're basically saying, you know, I'm going to choose my business, which in a lot of the times, you know, you should because business is business, but it's like, you know, that at the end of the day, if you guys are, if you guys grew up with each other and you claim to love him and you claim to, you know, have this elite brotherhood then you should be supporting each other in, in, in everything you guys do you know and I think that's why the Tates are so damn successful because they clearly you know no matter what whether it's right or wrong you know they still they, they hold each other accountable if it's, if it's wrong but at the same time they still support each other you know and move forward you know in whatever decision they make yeah you know? just to, to add some credibility what you're talking about you know when we've sat down with the Tates multiple times now I've never seen brothers that support each other's like these guys, yeah. okay? Look, uh, I have a sister. We don't necessarily see eye to eye and everything, but publicly, I don't talk shit. Behind, like, behind closed doors, I will let her have yeah, That's it. what I'm saying. But yeah. on camera, you kind of got to protect your family. Of course. You kind of got to do that. So there's a clip, actually, when, I, when we were talking with Tristan about his thoughts on uh, basically family and not basically disrespecting your brother that's kind of what it seems is they're airing dirty laundry out mm -hmm. and they're one-upping each other whereas the tates no matter what goes behind closed doors you don't think they've had aggressive conversations they're in jail the you don't think they've had issues uh that never comes out uh on camera here's this clip like their relationship with brothers if i could criticize anything about them I saw, I mean, there are clips when Jake's like, oh, I want to be the world champion of boxing. And Logan's like, yeah, yeah, good luck. Yeah, as if. I don't feel that's a good way for brothers to behave, but more of that comes from Logan to Jake. And now no one cares who Logan Paul is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no one who doesn't drink his cheap sugary energy, energy drink really cares who he is. Um, and, you know, I think in five years, no one's going to know who he is, but Andrew's still going to be relevant. Wow. I don't like their relationship. So he's basically calling out their relationship. All right, ladies. Um... What's your interpretation on this? You see brothers fighting. You see brothers having each other's back. What does this do from a lady's perspective, Sarah? I love the Tate brothers' relationship. I feel like it's so like strong and inspirational. Mm -hmm. As like a family standpoint, I feel like you can't even compare the two sets of brothers by a landslide. I think that Jake and Logan's relationship is kind of like embarrassing, in a sense. Is for like what Tristan said, like Logan is always kind of like dissing him. There's a lot of videos, like there's a video of Jake like recently fighting and when he like knocks someone out, Logan's kind of like rolling his eyes like in the crowd instead of like cheering his brother on. I think that that has a lot to say about him as a person and he's trying to like compete with his brother. He's jealous of him maybe, like that's how I would view that. I gotcha. think that that's unattractive and. How about you, Marissa? Um, I agree, I think between the Paul brothers, um, they seem to be competing, mm -hmm. not so much as a team. Yeah. And that is just, like, honestly, it's goofy to me, especially, like, that's your brother. Yeah. Like, it's either you're with me 100% or you're not with me at all. Like, mm -hmm. me and my sister are very close. Me and my whole family, like, are very, very close. Um, so, but yeah, like, the little, like, passive aggressive comments that they do to each other, like, like you said, um, he got knocked out, or he Jake knocked, knocked somebody out, out yeah. and then, like, Logan was rolling his eyes instead of, like, cheering him on. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, yeah, that's, I don't know, that's weird. I'm, like, very, I don't know. But mind you, the, both the brothers, they came up very differently. Mm -hmm. You know, the Paul brothers came up with pranking each other, getting mm -hmm. at each other. That's kind of how they kind of built their fame. The Tate brothers, they built their, you know, where they're at now with their bond being so strong. 
So there was never, if you ever saw Tristan and Andrew fight, it would be like, whoa, like we've never seen this from you. But when you see the Pauls kind of do it, it's like, oh, is it an act? Is this part of what they're doing for marketing? Like you never really know. I think it's two sets of different relationships. Now, if you're asking which one I relate to more, it's obviously I'm more of family. For me, I'm like, I'm a ride or die family girl. Loyalty, that's big for me. So that's where I kind of lay. But in the defense of the Paul brothers, if you're thinking about, well, you know, we have to sit here and ask like, oh, was that for kind of clout? You know, the Tate brothers, you're like, no, that was real. If they were fighting, you're like, that was real. That was not planned. So I think it's just a different set of brothers and dynamics, especially when it comes to also financially. You know, they grew up, they, they grew up financially like, oh, I gotta, I'm competing against my brother. So you have also that dynamic of like, well, now we've done this for so many years, kind of alone, but together. So it's just, we're continuing the journey of what we kind of built from the beginning. Let me say one thing. Uh, you know, life is what it is. Like you can't, you know what, you can't pick your, you can't pick your family. You can pick your friends. You can't pick your family. Uh, I wish mm -hmm. that I had a fucking brother. Yeah. I wish. I love my sister. She's great. She gave me a nephew. That's my best friend. That's my little homie. That's my guy. But to have a brother that you can run with, a running mate with, and be best friends with, and build a business with, and build a brand with, and fight with, and 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 come up with. For a for a boy, for a man, That's dope oh, there's nothing like that, yeah. bro. Yeah. For that, I mean, like, my sister's great and all. She might see this and be like, "Go fuck yourself, man," or whatever. <laughs> but uh, to have a brother, I feel like there's the saddest thing because I know some brothers that like fight and don't like each other and don't get along. I'm like, you guys are brothers. You guys could take over the world, world together. together. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, you know, what do they say is like, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go as a team. Yeah. You have two brothers. They could take over the world, go as a team. That's how I, that's how I would interpret this. Anyway, moving right along, uh, speaking of fighting, uh -oh. speaking of beef, bing, bing. speaking of things that are going on, show them Nat. Bing, bing. Yeah, it, it, Nat's about to lose that fight. Hey, you wanna fight? Ping, ping. <laughs> Come no. on, man. Come, baby. Not, not pow, pow, <laughs> just ping, ping. All right. So Logan, fight, Logan oh, Paul is about to actually fight. This guy called Dylan Dennis. Anyone familiar with that? Yes. So there's more internet beef that's going on. Beef. But if we know anything, this is a money show. Here we go right here. Logan Paul and Dylan Dennis. These guys make tens of millions of dollars for manufacturing some beef. Oh. Okay? And doing the whole, like, go ahead, Nat. Bing, bing. Yeah, no, not bing, bing. Uh, All right. Stop. Sorry. Just, but, <laughs> anyway, you're done. Um, but they, you know, <laughs> you know, we see Jake Paul fighting the UFC guys. We see uh, Logan Paul fighting Mayweather and doing what he does, WWE stuff. So here's this guy, Dylan Dennis, that has had beef, I think, straight up with the, with the Paul brothers for years, mm. okay? By the way, I'm not expecting you guys to know too much about this because we're going deeper on this story. So those two are about to fight uh, October 14th in the UK. Um, but this weekend got a little spicy, okay? Because uh, this guy, Dylan Dennis, hit something... Um, Hit below the belt, let's just say, to use a term, where um, he went viral on Twitter after sharing pictures of Logan Paul's fiance oh, uh, no. doing things with other men in her past. Now, does anybody here know who uh, Logan Paul recently got engaged to? Does anybody know her name? A woman. Okay, she's a woman, so correct. A Thanks, man. Right? Killing the game right now. She's a pro skier her, or She's actually, or uh, that, is, that is Jake's girl. Oh, yeah. He got engaged to uh, none other than Danish supermodel uh, Nina Agdal, okay? Uh, and um, Nina, you'll recognize her, but Dylan started posting pictures of her with other men. And the coup de grace was a picture of her with Riff Raff. Do we have that picture of her with Riff Raff? Okay, pull that up. Okay, do you guys know who Riff Raff is? Yes. yes. Okay. So this is her um, allegedly, allegedly, stay in the moment, kissing <laughs> Riff Raff. So Damn. punch in on that, my friend. Damn. Okay. Yeah. So now, um, that is her kissing uh, allegedly Riff Raff. So um, <laughs> this whole story is going to have a funny ending, so wait for it guys so who is nina agdahl let's pull this thing up right quick so nina agdahl uh i think we have a couple articles right so who is nina agdahl logan paul's fiance goes viral after dylan dennis posts photos of her with other famous men so if we can expand this article malik we're just going to quickly run through some of the pictures that dylan dennis basically started putting out there 
By the way, this is their engagement. This was oh, last wow. July. Uh, scroll down. Scroll down. Play the video, actually, just so you guys get some context. These two look like they're happy. So cute. It was a cute video. Get married here. <gasps> what about engaged? This is in Lake Como, by the way, if you've ever been to Italy. I can't. Why? I can't. I'll tell you why in a second. You are the love of my life. You're the girl of my dreams. I never thought I'd find you. Now that I have, I never want to let you go. I'm sorry I'm being such a pussy. <laughs> Can you hit this button for me, please? Oh my god. Baby girl. <laughs> Will you marry me? <laughs> Titties are cool. Anybody need tissues? Everyone Aww. okay? Okay, gotcha. Keep scrolling down to this article. By the way, that was pretty. By the way, you can put her. you can put that type of music around any video. It it's gonna get you. Okay, it's a lot of it. So, congratulations for them. Uh, but we'll continue with this story. Keep going down. Aww. Okay, so he started. <laughs> Dylan, uh, yeah, <laughs> Dylan Tannis. That's just mean. Uh, Dylan Tannis. So, so mean. Continue to post pictures oh, okay. of. <laughs> Um, Nina with other men. <laughs> now this was ironically at Model Volleyball. Mikey did that. That you're very familiar with, Model Volleyball. Yes. Nat, I'm talking to you. This yes. picture was at Model Volleyball. I know. Okay, <laughs> that, that should ring a bell a little bit because okay. Nina was one of the models at Model, Model Volleyball. Volleyball. How many girls did we interview at Model Volleyball? Hundreds. Hundreds. So Hundreds. Nina, I know her from, from back in the day. Keep going down. So he's posting a bunch of pictures of her with other men, keep going, Damn. keep going, keep That's going, crazy. keep going. <laughs> so he's just kind of playing below the belt here, Dylan Dennis. Keep going, Malik. He needs to get his ass knocked out. Okay. He's just posting a bunch of pictures about this. Okay, keep going. Okay. This bitch is a thot. <laughs> gotcha. Ja That's Ja Rule. Gotcha. Now, these Damn. are just pictures that he's posting out there. I'm not saying anything like that. Keep going. Okay, keep going. Uh... Keep going. Malik, you're allowed to go fast, buddy. Keep going. Gotcha. So she's put a, he's putting a bunch of pictures out there. Now, uh, you might be saying to yourself, so who's this Nina Agdell girl? Gotcha. So um, go to that other article if you don't mind. Gotcha. So here's who Nina Agdell has dated in the past. So we will go down the line here. Malik, go fast here, buddy. Uh, so she's dated, by the way, that, this is the cover that made her famous. Go back up. She was on the cover of the 50th anniversary of Sports Illustrated. Mm. I want to say that was in 2014. Christy Teigen was on there. Mm. And I forget the other gal that was on there. I think maybe like Alexandra Ambrosia, whatever, whoever it was. But this is what made her famous. Mm. Um, since then, and we'll go back prior to that in a second. Since then, she has dated the likes of Joe Jonas, Adam Levine, mm. Leonardo DiCaprio, Jack Brinkley, who is the son of Christy Brinkley. Um, but prior to that, um, she was a Miami girl. Uh, she used to roll with some of my friends. Oh. <laughs> she used to roll with my crew. Shocking. I believe we have a picture of that, Malik. Okay, Let's there's her and me. Zoom in on sauce. Zoom in on sauce, friends. At my oh, bar bodega. My yeah. God. Yeah. There he is. Oh, at my bar bodega <laughs> in look, South Beach. You look better now. Thank you. I look better now. Awesome. And to the right of Nina is the founder of Model Volleyball, oh, my yes. homegirl, Olivia, as you know. Mm -hmm. And then also my other girl that runs the Soho House in Miami. And then my best friend, Keith, who took me to Aspen on his private jet. That's right. You see how this thing all comes full circle? That's at bodega. So Nina's been in the mix here. But prior to dating all these men, prior to Joe Jonas and Leonardo DiCaprio and now Logan Paul, she dated a couple other guys. She dated this one guy, Patrick Pizzorni. Uh, I call him Horny Pizzorni. He's a, a <laughs> DJ in Miami. He's an absolute stud of a guy. Um, she dated him. He was a local DJ in Miami. He's since blown up. He's a male model. He's doing his thing. Mm. But Nina, that's where she started. But now she's with Logan Paul, Leonardo DiCaprio. After that, she dated my boy, Reed, who's a big real estate guy in Miami. This is her and Reed. Mm. So here's where this story kind of comes full circle, because you can't trust everything that you see on the internet. Now, 
Go to the picture of her kissing Riff Raff. Kind of weird, right? Of all these dudes. Yeah. Talking Leonardo DiCaprio. Talking Joe Jonas. You're talking Adam Levine. Talking these good looking guys. Riff Raff? Really? Well, punch in on this, by the way. So this is why you can't believe everything on the internet. Uh, now scroll down just a little bit. So um, while this post might be satire, the man in the pictures is not actually Riff Raff, but none other than Nina Agdahl's ex-boyfriend, Reed Heinery, who wow. I just showed you in the last picture. This is on Halloween. Hmm. This is a costume. This is not real. Hmm. So just for context, we're not, we're not here to just shit on Nina. So um, here's what I will say about Nina. Okay, um, and this is where I want to get your ladies' perspective, especially McQueen. Um, she does have a reputation for being a social climber, okay, and for looking for what they call the BBD, not the BBD that you know uh, Adam 22's girl took recently. Talking for <laughs> the bigger, better deal. She went from an awesome DJ to an awesome real estate guy in the Miami. Uh, some of friends of mine. Then she went to Joe Jonas. Then she upgraded to Maroon 5. Then she went to Leonardo DiCaprio. And now she's one of the, one of the biggest guys in the world, Logan Paul. Okay, by the way, she is 31. Logan Paul, I believe, is 28 uh, on this. So uh, if anybody knows anything about me, uh, one of my favorite group from the 80s is Hall & Oates. Does anybody here know Hall & Oates' most famous song? Anyone here on the panel? Sing it. Whoa, here she comes. Oh, yeah. Watch oh, out, boy. Yeah. She'll chew you up. Whoa, here she comes. <laughs> ladies, she's a man eater. <laughs> Here's my point, ladies and gentlemen. With dating history like that, okay, this beautiful, gorgeous <laughs> supermodel, I would classify as a mother man eater. So if you're Logan Paul, buyer beware. You've already seen her dating record. Now, I've said before, the last thing I want to do is be the third guy, the second guy, the third guy, the fourth guy, to take some girl to Aspen, right? So I went on a trip recently to Aspen, right? Prior to that, I took another girl on a trip to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, right? And the girl says, oh, I don't really like Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I like Aspen better. I said, hold on, you've been, what? You've been on these trips before? You've been on this? And there's nothing more deflating to a man mm -hmm. When you take a girl to an amazing vacation and she hits you with like, yeah, I've been here before. It was a good time, whatever. I like other places. You know what I'm talking about, McQueen. That shit would kill me. So um, <laughs> that shit will kill you. Yeah. So no. now you're, you're, you're engaged to Nina Agdahl, who's dated some of the most famous men on the planet, Leonardo DiCaprio, and then go down the list from there. What kind of world of pain? If you were Logan Paul's homie and you're like, yo, Logan, I... Just so you know, like, I saw these pictures, <laughs> dog. Like, I've seen who she's dated. Like, yeah. I get that she's hot, but I also like Hall and & Oates, and I understand what a man-eater is. What would you say to Logan Paul? I mean, listen, brother, I, I know you think that uh, she's the one for you. You've been looking for, for, you know, your whole life, but she's got skeetered on by a lot of guys, you know, and <laughs> here's the pictures to prove it, you know? I mean, I wouldn't be a good homie if I, you know, didn't tell you to think about this before you made this decision, you know? I mean, like you said, she is classified as a man eater, you know, by, by her record or her track record. So, I mean, you are a very high value guy and you, you have a lot of money. You have a lot to lose in this situation, especially with the marriage game. Um, and her track record isn't really trustworthy. I'm just telling you that. That's what that's what these are my words to him as a hypothetical friend. OK, you know, but it's hold on, hold on. Let, let the man speak, Nat. Malik. I feel like everybody. OK. Better. What would you say if your homie was about to wife up this model with this type of track record? Speak loudly, sir. All right, so uh, first off, I'm like, look, listen, Logan, like, I know you love this woman or whatever, but like, uh, you, you know like what's happened before you. So like, you have to have, anytime you make some type of move with her, that has to be in the back of your mind. And it's not like, oh, some local neighborhood girl who like, you know, everybody's been with around town like you can google this woman and she's in a photo with somebody known and probably somebody you know or somebody in a circle of a circle that you know so it's like it's just too close so like, gotcha. you just gotta so ladies up. you've heard what the men on the panel have to say like you know i use my hall and oats reference uh let's let the ladies get a word in okay nat since you were jumping the gun i'll sorry. let you go first sorry um 
I get what you guys are saying, but at the end of the day, I feel like whenever you break up with somebody, you're going to date someone better, if yeah. that's a man yeah. or a woman. Upgrade. And yeah. this you know is all those somebody. girls upgrading from Leonardo DiCaprio and Adam <laughs> But here's Levine the thing. She's Jonas also somebody who's a socialite. She's also somebody a socialite, so her career has been on magazines, as has been, you know, public eye. So just by default, people's eyes are on her. You know, there's people that you're dating now that maybe they're not on the cover of magazines that they've been around. Um, so I don't think there's anything wrong with breaking up with somebody and then finding someone better and going with somebody better. Um, and I don't know if all the people they're dated, I'm sure some of them she's dated has a little bit more money than maybe who she's with now. So I think at the end of the mm -hmm. day, it's just a matter of kind of when you find somebody who really clicks with you and where whoever that person is and it makes sense, then, you know, you feel comfortable to make that, uh, you know, okay. decision. Thank but you. I don't think there's anything wrong with dating somebody better after you broke up. Got That's it. Well, smart. let's get Kay's opinion here because some of these guys would fit your minimum criteria. Logan Paul is worth at least $100 million, I want to say. <laughs> uh, so is Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, I don't know where 25. Joe Jonas or Adam Levine <laughs> yeah. are. But these guys fit your minimum criteria. If it was $50 million, yeah. I wouldn't even ask you about it. Yeah, I mean... So what would you say uh, the, are the red flags or the green flags you see in this relationship? I, I don't necessarily, I, I don't see red flags per, particularly because they're both in the limelight. They're both, you know, in that high profile lifestyle. A, she, you know, because she's dated other men within the industry, she understands his lifestyle. So she's not going to be like unaccommodating. And he, you know, he finally found someone that might be able to match that energy. Um, so to use the terminology, social climber, I, I think is, is reaching because she's really just an extensive networker. I mean, she's built her network from the yeah, ground up. Yeah, she's networked that pussy. Yeah, I, I yeah. mean, okay, but again, that's what you guys are after, and she leveraged it accordingly. Can you be mad at her for being a smart business No, woman? I'm not mad at her. <laughs> I would tell my homie, uh, this is some evidence right here of, uh, by the way, go back to another, um, Pull up the article but you don't of, think he of knows her that dating. Though? Yeah, really? don't think he knows. I'm attracted like, to that. He has He's to like know that. that oh, she's this, this woman has people. dated men that no. make more money than me. That's a, that's a challenge for him. He doesn't want someone he can just pick up off the street. Cut, like, has has never worked for anything. Has to have her own, have her own name. You know, understand the lifestyle. I think it. it it matches what he's looking for, you know? And mm -hmm. to be honest with you, I think any man that would that would try to contradict that is just jealous they're not pulling a woman at that capacity. But I'm confused. They're, like, they're, they're, jealous, they're, they're, they're jealous that they're not pulling a girl who's clearly been fucked by so many different celebrities. That's isn't this, like, public, though? Like, how would he have not known that she dated, like, Leonardo DiCaprio? He, he does. Of course he, he knows. Of course yeah, he knows. That's of course, the thing. Of course. We're not, it's like, yeah. they know. We, they're yeah. fully aware. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Go, go to the other article, by the way. Scroll down. <laughs> yeah. so funny. Shout out to Jamie Foxx, by the way. There's, <laughs> there's my buddy Reed right there. Yeah. Okay, scroll down. All I'm saying is, keep going, keep going, Malik. I'll tell you when. You seen all this? So you're like, saying a man is gonna be jealous of all I, this? I'm just saying yeah. you gotta, yeah. you gotta know your what you're egos are buying. So big. Malik, Can you imagine like well, no. this? Play this Dylan, video right I here. I feel like with a man with his status, it's more of like a liability than it is an asset. Stadium full of people that. once. <laughs> she said. She got Play it again? I sucked a d in a football stadium full of people once. I would be so jealous of this, <laughs> okay, man. Like, I would be absolutely just, fucking. Clearly, they took three seconds of that entire clip. There was a lot more conversation that went on in that entire interview as opposed to just that Listen, particular Listen, all we're thing. saying is, <laughs> as a man, like, I, I love when you women don't hear us. You want us to hear you, and you want us to believe that you're going to get this $100 million guy, and. You've done all these things and we're listening to you. Well, you hear three men on the panel being like, what would you say to her? And all three of us are like, yo, listen, homie. Like, no, I just I wanna get let that. you know. Hold on, this is another woman not letting a man speak. Um, uh, listen, homie, just, just, I know you love this girl, but just wanna let you know, as your homies, these are our concerns. This is what we think. Like, I get that she's hot and she's beautiful and she'll suck your dick in a football stadium. We get it, player. Yeah. But we just wanna let you know we are voicing our concerns because we love you because yeah. we're not trying to give you any of our pussy because we don't have one. We're a guy. Right. Yeah. So we're just trying to give you our feedback. But none of you girls want to hear what the guy has to say. You just want to give us your two cents. No. Go ahead, Sarah. No, I, I think that's fair. But what I'm saying is, is like this was definitely like public information that he already knew. So like I feel like it's it would be like a different if this is like all the secretive stuff came out. 
but it, it was clearly not secretive. Like, but sometimes uh, what's on the uh, surface, you, the conversation must need to be have to look. Just because you can do the math here doesn't mean that he actually showed his work and was like, all right, so Leonardo DiCaprio dick <laughs> times a Joe Jonas dick, and then you've a minus an Adam Levine thing, and then you throw in what may or may not be a riffraff, and then here's what we here's the work right here. Sure. Maybe Logan's just like, bro, I'll just this girl's so fucking hot, I don't even know I, that he didn't even actually do the work. You know guys like this, right? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Okay. I, I How many mean, times have you had a conversation with a buddy that's like, look, I know that so and so is hot as shit and she's got big titties, but I just want to let you know, dog, that I've, I've had it plenty of times. Okay. Yeah. What are those conversations like? Um, I don't need deep de detail. <laughs> well, in, in summary, it's just behind closed doors. I'm like, listen, man, I love you, but your bitches are tight. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you got to do something. You got to be smart before you make this decision because if you just go into it, it's going to hit you in the face. Everybody's going to, it's just going to hit the fan and then, yeah. you know, and then it always ended up being like something where she ended up cheating on him for another guy because, you know, women are hypergamous creatures. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, they're going to do what they do. And, um, well, and especially if she's a thoder like that, you know, so it's like if, you can't really get mad if, you know, if you choose to date this woman, knowing her history, knowing exactly. what she, kind of person she is, yeah. and if she right. does it, then later on you can't get mad. So that's why I understand what you're saying. But like, what's worse? Would you rather have her stuff be public like it is now, or would you rather date a girl who's super private and find out she's been a hoe for the whole her whole life? Well, I would rather her be rather private be because then I... I would leave, yes, but I'm saying I would rather be private that way. At least no one knows. Yeah, that's not yeah. embarrassing. Like, I feel yeah. like this yeah. is probably sure. embarrassing him to know. I, mm -hmm. And this is definitely why people always say, like, men care about a woman's past and women care about a man's future. I was just about mm -hmm. to say that. A hundred percent. A man is concerned about what a woman has done in the past because sure. that will come up and bite him in the ass. Mm -hmm. Where a woman is concerned, can this man take care of me in the future? Yep. You know, they say that, you know, the Internet is undefeated. Mm -hmm. So, like, you, for instance, we pro I totally forgot about that clip. But if we want to go find that clip, we'll find that clip. Please, can we so, not? No, we won't. We're not going <laughs> to yeah. do it. I would really but any it. man, you know this, baby. I'm not letting you, like, I'm not breaking news to you. Any man, like, that you end up dating, that $100 million man, you know that his buddy's going to be like, you know what she said one time before, that blah, blah, blah. And that's something that you're going to have to deal with because that's your past. And I get it that you've, you're owning up to it and you had accountability. But just so you know... Just so if, like, you and McQueen ever worked out when he makes his $100 million, he's able to speak yeah, to you. Yeah, you know, you, tonight, you yeah. know, like, a homie like me is going to come to him and be like, hey, listen, dog, I don't know if you saw this clip on Fresh and Frit, but this was some ho-ass From, shit back yeah. then. From eight years and that's ago. your wife. And he's going to be like, But you should have nah, that I talk with your boy anyway. <laughs> no, any, boy, any guy who's marrying a girl, you should have a talk with your boy, like, uh, a serious talk, like, who is the girl you're marrying? Who is her association? Just be careful. Like, you should do that just because that's your boy. It doesn't, no, I mean, that's not how it works. I think you should. No. Because it, it, if a man's getting married and you've witnessed her treat him like crap the whole time that you, and she's a nobody, that's also no, something well, you would talk to your boy about. I would assume if you see him getting married to a girl who's been physically or verbally abusing you don't, him. You don't, bring, you don't bring things to your friend's attention that he already is aware of. Like, hey, I've noticed that you but and you your girls are all like, oh, shut up, woman, I'm talking. Your friend, Listen. The wife what speaks I'm down that, on him, yes. and he just takes it. You, uh, the man knows what's going on. It's sort of incumbent on a man to bring things to his attention that he might not be aware of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, but I think you he's aware know. Of that. I think he's aware of this. Is it's he, pretty though? public. She's okay. literally with, like... I, if I'm being fully honest, and this is no disrespect, I'm just pointing out what I see, I think yeah. this says a lot more about Logan Paul than it does about the girl. Why do you say that? Because it's like, you know, it's pretty hard. I mean, Logan is a... So he blew up off of social media. He's very aware of what's going on on the internet, you know. And yes. like So yes. it's like, especially with someone like a track record like hers, I'm pretty. He's and he's not stupid, you yeah. know. So it's clear that he knows. Even if he doesn't know all the guys you just scrolled and showed right now, he knows there's a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I think it says more about him choosing to after he saw that to yeah. continue with the relationship than it does about the girl, you know. So. Miss Pal McQueen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, ladies, any th any other thoughts? Anna? No, I totally agree here. Like, you agree with what? I love that. With the queen. <laughs> First time. Okay. <laughs> I wanna, can I say something? Yeah, go ahead, Marissa. I, I'm big on uh, quality over quantity. Um, I don't, I feel like even at that status, you don't have to date tons of people. You know what I mean? Um, really, it's, I just think it's a good thing to really like dwindle down and um, like make sure you know, like I said, uh, quality over quantity. Yeah. For sure. So, yeah, just for the record here, you know, we don't, I don't do any, like, 
you know, exposés on people's dating life. I just happen to no, know no. intimately yeah. who this woman is. She's dated multiple of, of friends of mine. I've known her for years. I'm not talking shit about her whatsoever. I'm just saying, here are the facts. Yeah. Here who she dated. By the way, it was not Riff Raff. Let's clear the record here. So, sir, it is now on you to do what you want with this information. I rest my case. The jury's out. So, last story here. Last story. Um, recently, there was a song that got canceled. Aww. Okay? You know, we've, we've heard about people getting canceled. You know, Andrew Tate got canceled. Trump got canceled. Uh, all sorts of comedians. Dave Chappelle almost got canceled. He fought that back. Joe Rogan almost got canceled. He fought that back. You know, cancel culture is a real thing, right? So is victim mentality. But we all like the band Queen, right? We've seen, did you see the movie? No? Do you know one song from Queen? No. You need to wake up and smell the roses. <laughs> we <laughs> will, we will uh, rock, rock you. you. Uh, I know that one. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, okay. We That's crazy. are okay. the champions. I know that one. My friend. Sing it. Mama. Just... There it is. <laughs> Another one. Okay, Bohemian Rhapsody. Sing it. Anyone? Uh, Galileo, 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 yeah. Galileo. Galileo. <laughs> No? Yeah. Wayne's World? No, it's been Let's go. I They've just also, to hear you sing. Of course. <laughs> think I'm shy? Think I'm scared? Think I'm scared? No. So they also hey, came out with a song called um, Fat Bottom Girls. Oh. This is in the 70s. They came out and the song went, Fat Bottom Girls, you make the rockin' world go round. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. So Fat Bottom Girls is what bitches. you think it would be. Okay. <laughs> it's girls with a fat ass, yeah. with a PH. Yeah. Okay, you know, I mean, you talked about BBLs. You can't look away, brother. I can't look away from her? The BBLs, I'm oh, saying. Oh, I definitely yeah. can't look away, yeah. Yeah, sure. that's what I'm saying. Me Fat neither. bottom girls, this, this is kind of your thing. No, it definitely is. You know, you know, natty to your credit you out here. Yes. You know, you're natty with the baddie with the Jamaican patty with a fatty. I mean, this is what it be. <laughs> I'm shy, don't look at me. Okay. <laughs> so here's the deal. Um, can we pull up that article, Malik? So cancel culture drops fat bottom girls from Queen's greatest all-time collection. Feel free to punch in, Malik. So Queen's iconic song, Fat Bottom Girls, has been removed from the, grand, the band's greatest hits collection. The 1978 track was written as a tribute to what? Fuller figure women. Yeah. The exclusion of the song is believed to be influenced by woke cancel culture. Strikes again, y'all, as its lyrics are deemed inappropriate in today's society really in today's society <laughs> really huh okay huh. lines like left alone with my big fat fanny and she was such a naughty nanny big woman and a bad boy for me uh fat bottom girls you make the rocking world go, go round. round all right thank you <laughs> um, so um they've all been cited as apparently problematic shout out to queen right there so meanwhile industry insiders expressing bewilderment over the decision arguing that the song was intended as lighthearted fun, who doesn't like a big booty? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, you know that uh, there was a great poet, philosopher, back in the early 90s, who said uh, his, his name was Sir Mix-a-Lot, right? <laughs> OK? You can do side bends and sit-ups, but please don't lose that butt. We all know this one, right? I know. My anaconda <laughs> don't want none oh. unless you got buns, hon. Yeah. Even Nicki Minaj I made a Nicki song Minaj. called Anaconda yeah. talking about that booty. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. Um, Yin Yang Twins, shake it like a soul, shake it, shake it like a soul, shake it. Anybody here know this? Oh, yes. Talking about that booty. Cisco had the thong song. That thong, the thong, thong, thong. Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I played this song before the show. Destiny's Child had, I don't think you're ready for this jelly. I don't think you're, my, you're so booty -lish. Come on. I don't think you're ready for this yeah. jelly. Yeah. <laughs> don't make me do all the work here, right? Don't make me be Rihanna up in this thing. I want you to. Even Big Sean had a song called what? Ass, 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 ass. All, right, all, right. all right. So relax, guys. So this is to, to say that we're not that this 1978 song is problematic. Okay, at cancel culture is just picking this one song out. Not Nicki Minaj. Not the Yin Yang Twins. Not Big Sean. Certainly do not cancel uh, Sir Mix a Lot. Okay. Right. Baby got back. Yeah. Oh. We know that. Oh, yeah. Baby got back. Baby got back. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I already sang a bunch of the lyrics, but you missed that one. <laughs> so, uh, if there's anything that we know is that there's a certain woman who I know very well, because oh. I was a groomsman at her wedding, and that is 
Kim Kardashian, Kardashian. she made a big fat ass famous. Mm -hmm. it, arguably, she made not one, but two, but multiple billionaires with that fat ass. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, we've talked about BBLs, we've named all these songs. I could sing for days, but let me turn it over to this amazing panel. When you hear that a girl with a fat ass is all of a sudden getting canceled, how offended are you, Mr. McQueen? I'm absolutely deeply offended at the fact that they are trying to stop us from talking about the great thing that is fat asses. <laughs> you know? I fully condone this message. Yeah. It's yeah. Ridiculous. How do you go back in time and cancel something? I, that, that doesn't even fucking be like, that's fucking retarded. Yeah. You know, like, did you guys just wake up one day and was just like, yeah, you know what? The queen made a song back in the 70s. You know, we should cancel that shit. That shit pisses me off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like a lot of people who, like, who canceled it didn't even know about the fucking song. No. And it's like... None of these girls about a song. Yeah, and I feel like this generation tries to be so woke where they're pick and choose about everything and they're hypocritical because every single song or almost every single song on the top 100 rap is about women's bodies. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it could be from men, women, anything, and they're choosing a song back from the 70s. You can cancel any other thing that's getting released today because it's happening in the moment, but you're going to choose something that happened in the past that wasn't even offensive at all. Right. When you're hearing songs that's like, do it on the dick, do it on the dick. There's a song, <laughs> out, there's a song yeah. out right now that Aggressive. every single girl is singing, talking about my coochie pink and my booty oh, all is brown. Oh my God, it's so oh, my oh, my God. That's the song. Yeah, no, so I'm saying yeah, that song downtown. is being pushed, but they're, can't, they're mad about a guy yeah, talking about fat ass. That is an actual song? That's yeah. not a comedy yeah. video right there? Yeah. It's a song. Yes. Yes. With my, round, my coochie pink and my booty all is brown. Yes, that's what she's saying. Yeah. It says in the song, oh, too, <laughs> I'm out here in Miami looking for the hoochie daddy. That's what it says in the okay. song. <laughs> All right, so uh, ladies, okay, <laughs> you guys, you guys are all beautiful women with uh, big round derrieres. Okay, so do you think that this song from Queen should be canceled, Marissa? No, like I said in the beginning, I am not afraid of words. Nobody else should be. Oh, uh, you know, it only holds power. If, you yeah. know, if you give it to them. Yeah. Um, I don't. Yeah, no, I don't think it should okay. be canceled. Kay, you have admittedly spent $150,000 on that ass and them titties. You go Your down. words, not mine. Should this uh, song be canceled? No. Just one word. You've been lippy all day. Now we're talking <laughs> about that ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, it, it makes absolutely no logical sense. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Annika, you've already sort of responded yeah, to this. I have like a little bit of an add-on though. Yeah, go ahead. I feel like with this generation too, we preach body positivity so much. So how are we going to attack a song that <laughs> represents um, curvy women, for example, too? And it's just like bingo. I was amazing. Say that. Yeah. Yeah. Great <laughs> point right there. If you go to any Victoria's Secrets uh, store. All the skinny girls, the Nina Ab dolls, literally of the world, have been removed, mm -hmm. and they've replaced them with what? What? Curvy fat bottom girls. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, and I, like. Yeah. And now that's a bad thing. thing. Great point, Annika. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, <laughs> Anna, would you like to uh, add yeah. to this? Oh no, no, no. Should it be canceled? No, this song? of course not. I love the big butt. The biggest of the no, booties. Of not. Okay. <laughs> so you're good with them singing this? Of course. Is there a song in Russia where they owed to the big booties? <laughs> to be honest, like, I, like, I haven't been listening to Russian music like for a pretty long time, but I bet like right now they're singing about everything. Yeah. And I don't think they're getting canceled for that anyway. So. Are there any songs about big booties in Russia? I, I, I bet I can find it. Like, it it comes to the top of your head. No, because I haven't been listening to Russian music for gotcha. like, this whole time. So we I'm talked here. about Big Sean uh, singing ass, 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 <laughs> ass. How do you it's say ass in Russian? Jopa, jopa, jopa. Jopa, jopa, jopa. Respect to you. Sarah, what were you going to say? No, I was going to say the same thing she was thinking. Like, I've been thinking that the whole time. Like, for, for this day and age that glorifies obesity and body positivity and being overweight now, like, that's what they're going to cancel. I feel like it just doesn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to yeah. yeah, like, they don't make any sense. It's like, let's be happy with being overweight, not a shape, but let's okay, cancel how about you, Rose? talking about it. And it doesn't bother me. I think people are just overly sensitive about everything, especially oh, with yeah. like being too big. Lizzo's too big. But how big is too big? Too small is too small. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. always something. Okay. Well, let's save the best for last. And that, of course, is Aspen. <laughs> Aspen. <laughs> as, as, absolutely. No, I think it's so With stupid. two S's. Aspen. What are your thoughts? <laughs> 
uh, well, people used to call me Assy, but then oh. people call you what? Assy. Oh my it's God! Like so your she nickname is Assy. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. That's I why I saved you for last. Aspen, aka Assy. Yeah. Your song just got canceled. That's so. Stupid. How do you feel it's about that? It's a great that? song. And for when it came out back then, it was perfect. Like, wh why go back in time and cancel that? That's so stupid. Mm -hmm. It's a great song. We should. Play Unbelievable. It. <laughs> so listen, we all are all on the same page here. This yeah. song should not be canceled. So we were all in unison. Let's all put our hand in the middle. Can we all do this? Are we praying? No, no, no. What, what we're <laughs> saying is oh, cancel yeah. culture. You just got canceled. Cancel yeah. culture. Can we all agree on that? Yes. 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 Cancel culture. Do yes. not cancel yes. that out. Yes. Amen. Done. Yeah. Okay. Amen. It's Guys, so uh, this has been a fun show. This has been a spirit of debate. McQueen. I know that you got some work to do right now. Your net worth is only a measly one million. I know, crazy. <laughs> but we got to get you 99 more, brother. I'm, I'm about to listen to you. She gave me all the fire I needed to get that other 99. So yeah. okay, I appreciate. And it. only a woman with drive could do that. That's right. But when you get that 100 million, are you calling? I'm definitely K? not spending it on her. Prostitutes. What do you mean? Yeah, you can yeah. have a disagreeable, argumentative woman. I would never want to argue with a woman of okay. her caliber, no. <laughs> well, uh, respect, respect to everyone that. here. Before we wrap up, do you have any super chats that you would like to read before I we wrap up? I do have some super chats. Let me get them up here. Please no hate mail about me. Yeah, there's some hate ones, girl. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you. I'm not even going to call this. I don't it's know right. what I'm going to I'm just going to let you guys right now. Nobody has been hated on on the internet more than me. So, okay. Uh, 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 okay. I show up every goddamn week. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I don't fuck. Should I so read your you comments? ladies <laughs> will take uh, the chats in good stride. And okay. by the way, to the people that appreciate us here on the Sauzcast, thank you. We love you. To the haters that make all the comments, go fuck yourself. Kiss my but we still love you <laughs> as well. <laughs> because yeah. if they're hating on you, you ain't doing nothing right. Right? They hate, right? Exactly. They hate us because they ain't They hate us because they got an anus. <laughs> and they're trying to cancel the anuses these days, right? <laughs> they hate us because they ain't us. But, res okay. but real talk, respect to people that appreciate what we do, that hate what we do, that, that hate. It's all good. Here's what I do know. We ain't stopping. Not stopping. Okay? We're the number one channel on the internet for entrepreneurs, capitalism, business-minded folks. And we're just going to keep doing our thing. So anyway, it. go ahead. All right, we're going to take the haters. We'll read them, but just keep that in mind. Flat rate inspections to the women. My concept is that most women are truly afraid to meet the man of their dreams because they would be forced to change their wicked ways. Do you women agree? I actually don't agree. Uh, don't. disagree too much with that. Uh, J. Will Hub, uh, she cap, she asked Myron for money and declined. It's on video. Junior, uh, we wanted Myron to pay 30K for her. The time Myron refused to make the money off her by coming on the show was glorified. J. Will Hub, I know, more energy. I'm so excited to read these hate comments. DL Saint, I really there want to is. know your podcast. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat. I would tell Logan she's a problem. Have fun, but don't marry her. But if you do marry her, get your paperwork right, prenup, and don't cry to me when she leaves you. Salute to Adam, Nat, and the team. Salute to you, DL Saint. I always see you in the chat. I love this one. Crush my nuts. Shout out to you. Nice. He said, Nat is a queen. She can walk all over me. Crush your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> then we have a Chris. Uh, fake ho, body mods, belong to streets. Myron cooked extra crispy. Let's see what other <laughs> chats there is. I think that is all the chats. Thank you for the super chats, guys, including the hating chats. We turn the L's into love here, so we appreciate you. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, do all that fun stuff. And, uh, oh, we have last two chats. Beaten Cheeks, he said, see my knee. Uh, see my knee grow, McQueen soon. Girl in red, invest in cat food. Coach simping Jamba Juice of straw. Nat, you can, you can sip the Jamba Juice out of... My straw any time. All right, let's get <laughs> <Yeah. one. laughs> no, on to the happy ending. No, I, didn't hear the last what was it? I go to church, I'd rather not. I just heard something about Jamba Juice. Anyway, guys, here's what we do at the end of the show. This is called The Happy Ending. So we like to end on a lighthearted note. We would like to hear from you guys. Uh, your biggest takeaway from the show. You will, we each have a camera to look into. Bing, 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 bing. Give us your biggest takeaway and where to find you. Let's start on this side with Rose. Um, so, you know, just You're being right here. here. Oh, okay. Hey. So just being here, you know, just learning about, um, you know, people's perspectives on women prostitutes <laughs> and, <laughs> and other, you know, opinions of women, just, you know, whether it's body, whether it's who they dated, we're always kind of ridiculed. Um, and so I think we should just be easy on each other. The world is already world. It's kind of bad. So where can the people find you? 
Uh, you can find me on uh, my Instagram. You can find me at my business, um, femtex.com. And my Instagram is Barbie Rose XO. Nice. Well, thank you for keeping it classy. Thank you. Uh, assy. Speaking of going Hi. from classy to assy, Aspen, <laughs> it was great that Sarah brought you on. What yes. was your biggest takeaway? Where can we find you? Um, I loved all the conversations today. I loved laughing with you. It was great. Hi. Um, I do prefer to keep my Instagram private, though. Okay. We love so, that. So please don't find me. Well, okay. Well, okay. Sarah, uh, Sarah Elizabeth in the house. Big fan of yours. Uh, I've seen the growth. I've seen the conservative values really seep into your life. You've been uh, traveling Europe, having the time of your life. You met a nice French Dubaian guy Dubai. named Hafiz. And uh, <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself? Um, thank you for having me back. I had a good time. Um, and I don't know. I always like coming and hearing the different opinions between like men and women, learning about one another the way we view things i think it's good to like learn and grow you can find me on instagram if you need a social media manager for your business it's sarah with two a s a a r a h underscore elizabeth elizabeth with a z not an s elizabeth with a z respect a z. to you <laughs> anna my yeah. russian princess who only believes in two genders <laughs> And likes to sing Big the Sean yes, ass. Not my rule. <laughs> How do you, you know? say ass in Russian one more time? Jopa. Jopa, 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 Jopa. If you want some Jopa. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Anyways, That's uh, my biggest I'm takeaway very, of the day. Like, I was very happy to be here. And it was very interesting topics. Like, so 100%. Uh, would like to come back. And if you want to find me on Instagram, it's A-N-N-A double underscore L-E-V. Nice. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> And our young friend Aniko dropping that amazing gem about body positivity and cancel culture. W, Aniko, uh, what was your biggest takeaway, Corey? Where can we find you? Yeah, honestly, just like thank you for having me here once again. I had so much fun today. It was definitely nice hearing everyone's opinions on everything, just as, like especially coming here, just knowing um, the ways of business and like how people in the business industry see gender roles and stereotypes and everything like that. But you can find me on Instagram at Ani Bollock. That's A-N-I-B-O-L-L-O-K. And you can find all my other socials linked in my bio. And Saki Bond Entertainment. Thank you. Nice. Well, <laughs> congratulations on your new relationship. Thank you. Your boyfriend is a lucky man, literally and figuratively, because he gets all his dinners paid for. So <laughs> i got to find a girl with a social I'm media account. making him do drop shipping. I spent a though. lot of money on food and drinks. Um, <laughs> We'll come to you uh, last, McQueen. Uh, Kay, you've been quite the interesting guest. I love Thank you. you. People love you. Some people hate you. But I respect you for showing up. I'm an acquired taste. Yes, you are. Yeah. OK? And there's going to be probably like a handful of $100 million guys out there in the chat. They're going to probably DM you. Uh, hopefully, they're worth your time. Yeah. Anyway, what was your biggest takeaway? Where can people find you? Uh, it was nice to be surrounded by other women. Hey guys, mm -hmm. it was really nice to be surrounded by other women that are like-minded as far as values. Um, I have met some of the thoughtiest women in Miami <laughs> when I first moved here and to see, you know, how they conduct themselves and, uh, you know, what their priorities are. I can see that, you know, there's, there's good in the city as well. So I just wanted to compliment all of you on that. Um, and you can find me on Instagram, uh, kjenkins.co. And then you'll find my real estate there and my coaching as well. Congratulations. And, and congratulations for ridding yourself of the thoughtiness that uh, occurs here. And um, thanks for being here. Marissa, I think you've been uh, very feminine and lovely and added a lot of value to the show. Thank you. Um, what would you like to say for yourself? Um, thanks for having me on. It was a really cool podcast. Um, I was on a couple podcasts before, and this one was very well put together. So I liked that a lot. Um, it was very structured. Um, people weren't like screaming and talking over each other, which was yeah. Other nice. than hey. this one over here. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> who? Her? No, she's great. Me? We oh, love great. her. Yeah, she's awesome. Don't don't give her confidence. We like to keep that self esteem real low. No, no absolutely not. We love Nat. Just yes. kidding. Yes. And um, yeah, it was great. And you can find me on Instagram, Marissa, Schnau Marissa Schnauzer. Um, 
M-A-R-I-S-S-A-S-C-H-N-A-L-Z-E-R. And my esthetician page is Black Sheep Aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that. And speaking of Black Sheep, how you doing? I'm doing good. Okay. Thank I you for. I think I'm a brown sheep. Nat, thank you for doing sheep. what you do. Thank you. Uh, I'm just gonna give you a little word to the. Uh, you know, people want more energy from you when they do the super chats. Yeah, you know. I and just... I think you brought it in the second half. Thank you. What can so I say? So give us some energy and let you know. Let the people know what to. Everybody clap. Okay. <laughs> I kind of like that. Everyone listen. Everyone listen. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, Nat, you get the you power. I got the power. I got the power. I got the power. Well, first, uh, thank you all for coming. You know, spending time with us here today. You know, I know sometimes conversation can get a little hot and heated, but I appreciate you guys. You know, standing up for what you believe in, McQueen. Your take on prostitutes, <laughs> and um, you know, your Yo, take ah. on where your perspective <laughs> and your experience comes from. So I appreciate all of you know your guys' opinions, and thank you, Sauce, for uh, hosting out the show today. I think we covered some good topics. Um, I will say this: as we bring girls on the show, it's funny to see kind of the growth of some of the girls. You know, we had Gabby that she even said like, you know, I went home and I did an exercise that we talked about on the show. Mm. So as we bring you girls on, there's gonna be things that you learn, there's gonna be things that you say, you're like, I agree, I don't agree. And um, it's just a learning experience. So I appreciate you guys coming on here and kind of learning with us and going through the process here on SauceCast. Nice. Yes. Well, thank you for that. Uh, we saved the best for last. And that is the male prostitute himself. Yay! <laughs> Mr. McQueen. Uh, dude, I think you're hilarious. I think you're a stud. I yes. think you're a superstar. Thank you, man. Um, go ahead. There's a camera right there. Where can the people find you? What would you like people to know what you got going on in your life? Um, well, apparently I have nine... 99 million to go in order for me to be able to speak. So I'm going to work on that as soon as I leave this bitch. Um, it's the drive. Yeah. You know, and uh, my name is Megan McQueen. You can find me on YouTube. Just tap in Megan McQueen. Don't type in just McQueen because you know, the Lightning McQueen cars are just going to pop up. So you know what I'm saying? Just pick up the nigga at the top with the, you know, the black hat with a million subscribers. And, um, and then also on Instagram at the, uh, the Megan McQueen. So yeah, man. Respect to you, bro. Thank, Thank you. It's good, good to have you here in Miami, bro. Yes. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. So we're not far from you. And I live in South Beach, so That's we'll dope. connect. Yeah. Um, thank you guys for being here. This has been great. The good, the bad, the ugly, you know, we love it all. So I uh, appreciate everyone being here. And thank you guys for watching at home. This Thursday, um, we usually do shows Tuesdays and Thursdays. This Thursday, it's going to be moved to Friday this week. I don't know if you guys saw, we had Wes Watson on last Friday. Yes. That guy's a yeah. freaking beast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this Thursday, we're doing a reaction on PBD Podcast to the Republican presidential debates. Mm. Uh, some of us might be in Milwaukee. Ooh. So uh, stay tuned on that. Um, but stay tuned on Friday, uh, where SauceCast will be returning uh, to our old time slot on Friday, but just this week. Uh, but thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for being here. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one. We out. It's the sauce cast, baby.